dapat yung timer ng sa part niya po tapos si brother Benny po para po sa Adventist dalawa po ang ating moderator so sa akin yung hapo po ang affirmative naman ay si brother uh, Ronald at ang uh... so okay so ready na po tayo Uh, nandito na rin po ilan sa mga kasamahan ng ating pong uh, Roman Catholic uh, Faith Defender So narito na rin po ang kanilang uh, moderator uh, Anong name nyo po? Mel po, Mel Mel, si Brother Mel Para po sa side ng Roman Catholic Church At si Brother Benny Filomeno po Para po sa part po ng uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church So ang ating pong uh, yung atin pong uh, debate format, same pa rin po, kaya lang magbabawas tayo ng konti ng time sa latter part ng atin pong uh, <coughs> uh, uh, debate na ito. Again po, yung sa, ang magpapaumpisa naman ngayong hapong ito, para po sa kanyang uh, first stand, ay si Brother Ronald. Affirmative naman po siya. Kanina pong umaga, nauna na po si uh, Brother Alvin, at ngayong hapon naman po, si Brother Ronald... Uh, meron po siyang uh, 25 minutes for his uh, presentation at ang moderator po ay si brother Benny Filomino and then uh, after him yung uh, si brother Alvin naman para sa kanyang 25 minutes na first stand and then sa second part ay yung uh, rebuttal uh, 20, min uh, 20 minutes and uh, 20 minutes 15 minutes sa ribatan tayo, Brother Ronald, kasi yung ating time sa hapon to short. Kanina 20, 15 minutes, oo. Opo. So, 20, 15, 10. At uh, sa ano, opo, nagbawas po ng time kasi hanggang 4 lang po tayo dito. So, na, magbabawas po tayo. 20 minutes sa first stand, ang ribatan po ay 15 minutes. Opo. Tapos uh, sa cross-examine po ay uh, Uh, 10 minutes and then sa summary and conclusion 5 minutes na lamang po siya okay so magpapaumpisa po tayo sa hapon pong ito let's give the time to brother Ronald again inuulit po namin wala pong may hihiyaw during the time ng uh, nagdi-discuss uh, po sila wala pong may papalagpak wala pong may sususog tapos after po nila yung sa last part natin mag, uh, magbibigay tayo ng 1 uh, hour para sa question and answer ng mga audience naman, audience participation. Ulitin ko po ang audience po, hindi po sila makikipagdebate sa mga nandito po. Magtanong lang po kayo, pag hindi po kayo satisfied, na uh, bahala po kayo. Ganon din po sa kanilang dalawa. Pag hindi po sila satisfied, kung ipilit kasi hindi po sila baka magkaroon lang po ng uh, counting uh, promotion. So, ready na po tayong lahat. So, uh, 20 minutes para sa kanyang unang tayo, uh, affirmative brother Ronald Tubidos. Good afternoon, magandang hapon po muli mga kaibigan at sa ating mga bagong uh, bisita na dumating sa ating pong ikalawang uh, bahagi ng ating pong gaganaping uh, dialogue o masasabi nating debate, hindi ho ito debate, debate talaga. Uh, welcome sa ating mga suki. <laughs> ito yung mga suki na ka-sharing natin ito eh, di ba? Uh, kaya po sana ay uh, panatilihin po natin ang kapayapaan ng Panginoon habang atin pong pinag-aaralan ang katotohanan ng kanyang salita at kinahanap natin yung sinasabing tunay na iglesia sa huling araw na ito. Bilang bahagi po ng akin pong pahayag, gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo kung ano po ang palanaw ng Seventh-day Adventist pagdating po sa tunay na iglesia sa huling araw. Kanina napakinggan natin na para po sa mga kaibigan natin na Roman Catholic napakahalaga sa kanila ng tinatawag natin primacy of Peter and the uh, succession of apostles na sila pong uh, mga bishops ang naging successor para po magpatuloy hanggang sa pagdating ni Kristo ang tunay na iglesia. 
Ngunit sa konsepto po ng Seventh-day Adventist, ang konsept po ng tunay na iglesia, ito po ay umiikot po sa tupa pamamagitan ng tema na tinatawag natin The Remnant Church. The Remnant Church. So, ano po ang official na pahayag ng Seventh-day Adventist? At ito'y babatay ko sa website na adventist.org tungkol po sa pananaw ng Seventh-day Adventist tungkol po sa Remnant Church. Ang sabi po rito, The Universal Church is composed of all who truly believe in Christ. But in the last days, a time of widespread apostasy, a remnant has been called out to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This remnant announces the arrival of the judgment hour and proclaims salvation through Christ and herald the approach of this second advent. This proclamation is symbolized by the three angels of Revelation 14. It coincides with the work of judgment in heaven and results in a work of repentance and reform on earth. Every believer is called to have a personal part in this worldwide witness. So ayun po sa pananaw at pananaw at pananampalataya ng mga Seventh-day Adventists, Naniniwala po kami na gaya ng atin pong uh, pinahayat kaninang umaga, ang anak ng Diyos ay nasa pangangalat. Nakikita sila sa iba't ibang dinaminasyon, iba't ibang iglesia, at nabanggit na natin na kabilang dito po ang Roman Catholic Church na may tupa po ang ating Panginoong Sokristo sa iglesia na ito. Kaya po, Ano po naman ang konsepto? Paano pumapasok yung konsepto ng Remnant Church? Ayon po sa pananaw ng Adventist, ang Remnant Church ay ina-announce niya, lilitaw siya sa huling araw, hindi para patunayan na siya ay, uh, sabi nga ay, ay uh, siya lamang ang ililigtas, kundi mag invite siya sa iba na kung nais nilang maranasan yung full expression of faith at full blessings mapabilang sa Church ng Panginoon ay tatawagin din itong mga ibang topang ito para mapabilang sila dito sa Remnant Church. Ano po ang pinagkaiba ng Remnant Church kumpara sa ibang iglesia sa huling araw na ito? Itong Remnant Church na ito, hindi nila pinagmamalaki na makikilala ang tunay na iglesia sa pangalan. Kasi po, pag pangalan lang po ang batayan ng iglesia, unang-una, wala tayong batayan sa Biblia. Madalang sinasabi, kailangan mabasa ang pangalan mo para maging tunay kang iglesia sa Biblia. Pero ang tanong, sa ang talata sa Biblia yun? Sa ang talata sa Biblia na para makualify qualify kang true church ay kailangan ang pangalan mo ay nakasulat. Kaya po, gaya po ng ating binasa, ito pong remnant church na ito ay lumalakad at gumagawa ayon po sa katuparan ng propesya sa Biblia. Matutunghayan po natin yan dito po sa aklat ng Apokalipsis. Sa Apokalipsis chapter 12 ay Naniniwala po kami na ito ang mapa na ibinigay ng Diyos para po sa mga taong tulad tupa na naghahanap ng katotohanan ay makita nila kung ano ang plano ng Panginoon at kanyang mapa na titignan ng bawat tao na naghahanap ng katotohanan sapagkat naglagay siya ng palatandaan kung paano hahanapin. Ang sabi po sa Apokalipsis 12, bago yun, bago ko basahin, bigyan po yung background, ang Revelation 12, ay pangitain tungkol doon sa isang babae na nakita ni Juan. At naniniwala kami na itong babae ito ay nagre-represent sa iglesia. Ang sabi po sa verse 1, Now a great sign appealed in heaven. A woman loved with the sun with a moon under her feet and on her head 
a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in love, labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared, appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon is having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail threw a third of the stars of heaven and three of them and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Kung mapapansin po natin, mga kaibigan, ang babae ay simbolo. Hindi pwedeng literal na babae. Kasi, siya ay nakatungtong sa buwan. Wala pa sa kasaysayan ng mundo na tumuntong sa buwan na babae. Alam ko lalaki yung tumuntong sa buwan. <laughs> Mga astronauts. So, uh, though, We believe that this is not literal, this is symbolic. Ang babae, sa konsepto ng Biblia, ay simbolo ng iglesia. Ang mga Seventh-day Adventists ay naniniwala na itong Revelation 12 ay introduction kung paano ipinapakilala ng Diyos ang kanyang iglesia sa bagong tipan. Kung mapapansin natin, ang babae tinutukoy dito ay meron siyang 12 stars na suot-suot sa kanyang ulo. It represents the 12 apostles. Yung pagtuntong niya sa buwan, alam natin na ang buwan, walang sariling, walang sariling light yan. Kumukuha lang siya ng liwanag sa araw. So this is a shadow. So we believe that this church is well-founded as well in the Old Testament. Uh -huh. So kung tatanong niyo po kami mga kaibigan, Kailan ba nagsimula ang Iglesia ng Panginoon? Hindi ho yan nagsimula sa New Testament. It was already there at nagmanifest siya, lalo na noong ibangon ng Diyos ang kanyang bayan at palayain sa Egypto na Israel. Kaya nga po, kung babasahin natin sa aklat ng gawa, ito pong mga Israelita na tinawag ng Diyos mula sa Egypto para sila ay hirangin bilang bayan ng Diyos, tunay na iglesia, at magpapakalat ng maputing balita at magiging blessing sa lahat ng bansa, tinawag po silang iglesia. Ayon po rito sa aklat ng gawa 7.38, kung saan sila'y tinawag na church in the wilderness. So ang Panginoon, meron na siyang iglesia sa Old Testament. Iglesia sa ilang. Kung mapapansin nyo, yun ay uh, naging parang terms of convenience. No? Kahit nasa ilang sila, sila po ay iglesia pa rin ng Panginoon. Ngayon, ano ang point na gusto natin i-drive dito sa Revelation 12? Itong Revelation 12 ay continuation ng iglesia na nasa ilang. Hindi pwede na yung iglesia sa Old Testament, iba yung aral kaysa sa New Testament. Dahil iisa lang po ang Panginoon na Diyos na nagtayo ng kanyang iglesia. Sabi nga po sa unang Korinto 10.4, yung bato na sumusunod sa kanila sa ilang ay walang iba kundi si Kristo. So, yung iglesia tayo sa ilang, ang nagtayo nun walang iba kundi si Kristo. Siya po yung Diyos na pinapakilala doon. Kaya, kaya lang, ang nangyari sa iglesia ito, ay sila po ay naging unfaithful sa Panginoon. Ano? Hindi huuso sa Panginoon ang once saved, always saved. Pagka hindi ka naging faithful sa Kanya, ikaw ay Kanyang papalitan. So, nasan dito sa Old Testament yung concept ng remnant na sinasabi ko? So, ang bansang Israel ay piniging bayan ng Diyos, kaya lang hindi sila nagtapat. Bilang Israel na pinili ng Diyos ang nangyari ho sa kanila yung pagiging remnant nila naging historical remnant na lang sila. Historical remnant. Wala na sa kanila yung basbas ng Diyos kasi nagbago na rin sila ng aral. Lalong lalo na kanila po ang tinakwil ang Mesias na talagang tunay na tagapagligtas. 
Siya po ang itinuturo sa kanilang sistema ng santuario at templo sa Old Testament kung paano huhugasan ang kanilang kasalanan. Kaya lang tinakwin nila ang Panginoon na maghuhugas sana sa kanilang kasalanan. Kaya dahil yan, itong remnant church ng Panginoon noon sa Israel ay naging historical remnant na lang. Pero ito maganda. Ang konsepto ng remnant sa New Testament ay pinapakita sa atin, lalo na pag binasa natin sa aklat ng Roma, ang remnant, ito po ay preserved by the grace of God. So kung merong historical remnant ng apostate na nation of Israel, sa loob niyan, merong faithful remnant. So hindi talaga sabi nga, di ba, nung sabi ni Elijah, Panginoon, patayin mo lang lang ako. Ako'y nag-iisa na lang. Sabi sa radya ng Panginoon, Elijah, hindi ka nag-iisa. Ako ay nag-ingat ng pitong libo na aking mga pinili upang maingatan ang aking pangalan. Kaya yung konsepto ng remnant church, nasa Old Testament pa rin yun. So kung ang Israel, hindi nagtapat, kaya po sinugo ang Diyos, na ang anak ng Diyos si Kristo, na upang itayo muli at i-organize muli yung kanyang iglesia. Kaya ang ginawa ng Panginoon, para muli i-organize yung kanyang iglesia, ay tinawag niya mula doon sa historic remnant na Israel, yung mga faithful remnant. Ito yung labing dalawang apostol. Kaya kung babalikan natin yung aking uh, binabasa kanina sa Revelation 12, ang simula po na eksena ng Revelation 12, may binanggit na ang batang isinilang. So ang setting nito is during Roman Empire, nung ipanganak ang ating Panginoong sa Kristo, Pano ni Maria, merong church ang Panginoon nun. Kaya lang, kailangan ipanganak itong Mesias para po magpatuloy at i-organize yung tunay na iglesia. Kaya kung mababasa natin, yung dagon na lumanaraman kay Satanas, hindi natutuwa. Kaya ang ginawa niya, yung bata ayon sa Revelation 12, inaabangan niya sapagkat gusto niya patahin. At yan ay nakita natin sa kasaysayan sa Biblia. Sa panahon pa lang ni Herod, gusto niya ipapatay pa lang yung sanggol. From two years old, bababa, ipapapatay niya. Pero hindi siya nag, nagumpay. Pinapatay nila si Jesus, ipinako sa cross, pero nabuhay sa mulit sa mga patay. Kaya kung babasahin natin sa Revelation 12, uh, verse 3, andito yun, binanggit dito sa Revelation 12, yung nangyari niya sa ating Panginoon. And the child, as soon as he was born, She bore a male child who was to rule the nations with a with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to be with God and His throne. So, yung sanggol na si Jesus ay nakalitas. So, this is referring to the continuation of the church. So, ano na yung nangyari? Hindi nagaanak tuwag dagon, kasi nakalitas yung bata. Kaya muli inataki ni sa tanas ang iglesia. Kaya ang sabi niya don. Iningatan ng Panginoon ng iglesia at sabi ka nun, ipinag, itinago siya sa ilang. Sabi sa verse 4, And the woman led into the wilderness where she has place prepared by God that she then should feed her ha? for 1,260 days. This is prophetic days. So, ayon sa prophecy ng uh, Bible, one day is equivalent to one year. So for 1,260 years, itong iglesia nito, ayon sa interpretation ng mga historicist protestants, this refers to the Middle Ages or Dark Ages. Kung saan pinag-uusig, pinagpapapatay ng isang institutional church mula sa Roma, ang mga Kristiyano. Pero hindi na wala yung mga tapat na faithful remnant. Dahil faithful sila sa salita ng Diyos, at hindi sila pinagpabasa ng salita ng Diyos, but they are faithful, not to the institution, but to the Word of God. Dahil nagalit ang dagon, sinungga pa ng babae, pero tinago siya ng Panginoon, iningatan siya during that time. Kaya naman, sabi sa verse 17, And the dragon was enraged with a woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keeps the commandments of God and have na testimony of Jesus. So yung dragon, hindi siya nabigo siya kay Jesus, hindi niya napatay. Yung dragon, nabigo siya doon sa babae, hindi niya napatay. Tinago ng Panginoon sa ilang. Kaya, ang sabi niya, verse 
ang kanyang pansin ay ibina, binaling niya kanino to the rest of her offspring. Sino tong rest of her offspring? Ito yung remnant church in the last days. Naniniwala po ang mga historicist na yung 1,260 years nagsimula po ng 538 AD, nagwakas ng 1798, at yung therefore, yung remnant church na ito lalabas to after 1798. Naniniwala kami na ito po ay natupan sa Seventh-day Adventist Church na bumangon noong 1844 na nagpapatunoy na lumago hanggang sa panahon ito hanggang sa pagparito ng Panginoon bakit natin alaman na ito yung Seventh-day Adventist Church kasi may description they keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus ibig sabihin ng testimony of Jesus not only to the writings of Ellen White but they keep their faith based only on the scriptures inspired word of God so wala sa kanilang extra uh, yung tinatawag natin oral tradition basta Bible and Bible alone lamang sila at ang sabi nito itong church na ito na remnant church makikita natin na sila po ay nagpatuloy lamang pinagpatuloy lamang nila yung karakteristik ng tunay na iglesia ng Diyos mula pa ng una Paano? Sapagkat ang palatandaan ng tunay na iglesia, hindi po sa posisyon, hindi po sa apostolic uh, succession, kundi sa pagpapatuloy po ng aral at yung tinatawag po natin pagpapakilala na ang iglesia po ay palaging under po siya ng salita ng Diyos. Siya lamang po, hindi po, hindi po infallible yung church. Ang infallible po ay ang kautosan ng Diyos. Hindi pwedeng baguhin. Bagaman merong propesya sa Daniel 7.25 na merong institusyon galing sa ikapat na kalian, ang Rome, na babaguhin ng kautosan, hindi po yun ang karakteristik ng tunay na iglesia. Ang tunay na iglesia, kumikilala po sa kautosan ng Diyos at faithful to the testimony of Jesus. At to expand further, yung application ng testimony of Jesus, parang sabihin natin na ito'y natupad sa Seventh-day Adventist, naniniwala kami na itong spirit of, o yung patuto ni Jesus is referring to the prophetic gift in the church. Kaya kung i-quote po natin yung aklat na aking uh, sinulat ni Marvin Moore, The Challenge of the Roman Catholic Church, i-define ko sa inyo na yes, ang Seventh-day Adventist Church ay hindi siya lamang ang hininigtas kasi marami pang mga anak ng Diyos sa ibang church. But in other way, somehow, Seventh-day Adventist is the true church kasi siya ngayon ang inatasan ng Diyos in the last day, siya yung remnant church para magbigay ng mensahe ng angels, ng three angels sa Revelation 14. Kung babasahin natin ang Revelation 14, yung mensahe ng tatlong angels, dyan nyo maintindihan kung bakit ang mga Seventh-day Adventists ay lagi nilang idinidiin ang kahalagahan ng pagsunod sa ikaapat na utos ng Diyos, sa sampung utos. Kasi sinasabi sa Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, yung mabuting balita na ibinabalita ng anghel sa lahat ng mga tao sa buong lupa, ay ibinabalik ang mga tao na matakot sa Diyos at tuparin ang kanyang utos. Okay? God bless. At marami pong salamat. Thank you, Brother Ronald. Uh, let's give Brother Alvin his 20 minutes of presentation. Thank you very much, Brother Ronald. Good afternoon. Thank you for still being with us with Ronald this afternoon until we end at 4 o'clock. By the way, I would like to acknowledge my friends, young safety and apologists in Manila, Dong Adrian Maliari, Brad Melchor Manalili, so also a debater, and Brad Mahinay. They are three, so lima na sila ngayon. <laughs> Anim na kami. Nakompleto rin ako. <laughs> now, I am in the negative side, negating the proposition that is affirmed by Brad Ronald to resolve that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is founded by Jesus Christ in the Scriptures, in the Bible, and other standard references. I was waiting from start to finish 
I have not heard a single Bible verse in which Christ founded even one local Seventh-day Adventist church. And then, even in history and references, I have not also heard Brother Donald quote an encyclopedia or world history or church history, even some apostolic fathers na nagsabi ng isang apostolic father, o oh, si Kristo, nagpalago ng iglesia galing sa Jerusalem, hindi lang sa Roma, sa Antioquia, yung four bishoprics sa silabi kanila ng Brother Donald. So, in the morning, meron ding mga local at least all churches are Seventh-day Adventist churches. There is no such thing as Seventh-day Adventist Church. Only as Bertronald just now told us, it's only in 1844 it started way back since the time of William Miller. The first Adventist talaga is William Miller. And it's even a Sunday-keeping Adventist. Hindi siya Seventh-day Adventist. Now, I have cogent reasons and very strong reasons and arguments in which we, both Catholics and Seventh-day Adventists, should reject that proposition that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is founded by Christ according to the Bible and references. Why? Simply because, as I quoted earlier this morning in Matthew 16, 18, there is only one absolute founder of the church by God, Matthew 16, 18, 19. I will read in the Dewey Rams version. It reads, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind upon earth, it shall be bound also in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, it shall be loose also in heaven. Matthew 16, 18-19 But Ronald does not prove any continuity with Christ and Peter. Not even to connect the seventh Adventists, he just quoted Revelation 12, without even relation to Matthew 16, 18. That is very surprising. You try to affirm your church to be true and you not, not even quoted Matthew 16, 18. This is the first time I have heard a debater from a non-Catholic which does not quote Matthew 16, 18 because for a fact, Iglesia ni Cristo, born again and other religions, they love also love to quote Matthew 16, 18, 19. So it is a surprise to us. Why? Because simply, even Adventists know for a fact that Matthew 16, 18 cannot apply to the Seventh Adventist Church. Why? Because even my friend here, Brother Ronald, affirms in their TV program, in their program, that the key founders of their Adventist Church is no other than Mr. and Mrs. James and Ellen White and Joseph Bates. Well, dito naman, the cold, the chosen, God has always said a people, yung remnant na sinasabi ni Brother Ronald, by Adventist Ken McFarland, o oh, dito, Ellen G. White above left and with her husband, James, at above right, with Captain Joseph Smith, Bates below left were the founders of the Seventh Adventist Church. In this sinabi, were the founders local churches? I would like to challenge Brother Ronald Mamaya in questioning. So you can prepare Brother Ronald. No, I, I'll have a bonus question to you because this is my first negative stand. Saan mababasa sa inyong standard books in Adventist books tulad nito na talagang payak statement Jesus Christ founded the Seventh Adventist Church? Ang daming libro na sulat ni Mrs. White, walang nabasa kahit isa man lang, isa man lang phrase o statement. Brother and sisters Adventists, venerable brothers and sisters, that is an eye-opener for you. Matatanda ng iba dito, tapos wala pa kayong nabasa sa libro mismo ng inyong sabadista, even the commentary, na letra po letra, the Seventh Adventist Church, in which we are members of this according to White, is the true church founded by Jesus Christ and no one else. Wala kang mababasa dyan. As well, I was surprised. I'm reading all the literature of Seventh Adventist because I have informed you, my uncle is a Seventh Adventist and he supplies to me all the literature from Seventh Adventist Church. Because really, the founders, you cannot say for an excuse, founders only by Alvin of a local church. No, it's not local church. The church itself, Seventh Adventist. Now, I have here another to bolster my claim. These are all Adventist References, S.D.A. Lehman's Movement, A Door of Hope for Laodicea. Here on page 17, the Seventh-day Adventist book is all standard because it is S.D.A. Lehman's Movement. With the failure of the Second Advent by Miller to materialize in 1844, Mrs. Ellen G. White, in association with others, yun na yung sila Joseph Bates, Ed Sumheram, etc., launched 
unfounded the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. Kailan lang, with the failure in 1844, it had its beginning in 1855 and became official in 1860. And the proposition through the Bible dapat mag-umpisa talaga sa New Testament. Fallacy of non-sequitur, it doesn't follow na kung mag-prove ka there's a church in the Old Testament, kayo na rin yung church in the New. No! Because the Israel, the covenant people of God in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, I mean, it's not the same people of God in the New because the same people of God in the New is now the whole world. Those who will baptize in Christ. Matthew 28, 19-20, go to the whole world. Make disciples of all nations. That's why Brad Ronald affirmed it's Catholic, it's universal. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them all the things that I commanded you. Meaning the commandment in Revelation 12, 17 is always with the church. And behold, I will be with you till the end of time. So nandiyan si Cristo, hindi yun mababago yung, yung utos. Lahat ng utos, inutos na. But I was wondering why the seven Adventists may mga utos pala na dito sa New Testament na, na nabigay ng Seventh-day Adventists na wala naman sa New Testament. For example, yung utos na bawal kumain ng baboy, mga provision on pork, and other things, pati condiments, pati tea, pati, pati tobacco, etc. Wala naman dyan sa Biblia, sa Old Testament meron. Ibig sabihin, nalimutan ni Kristo to say that utos? No! Lahat talaga ng utos nandyan na. Bakit sabi ng Iglesia ni Kristo, bawal ang dinuguan? Nalimutan ba ni Kristo yung lahat ng utos? Nabigay na eh. Tapos meron palang kalakip, in 1914, according to the INC, bawal na dinuguan. Nakalimutan ba ni Kristo pag utos nung ngayon lang nang na-return ang church? No! That cannot be all the commands of God in Revelation 12, 17, that remnant church is no other than the church that I have affirmed in this morning's debate on about the true church which I am proving in affirmative, the Roman Catholic Apostolic Church. So it is clear here, many times in the book by Seventh Adventist, it is always affirmed that it is not Christ who founded the church but these three people Page 106 of the same book, Miller's Message Reach the Robert Harmon Family. And thus it was that their teenage daughter Ellen, a future founder, oh, isa na lang eh, founder, future founder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, hindi sinabi local founder of an American Christian church which has relation with the church in Jerusalem or in Rome. No! Really, the church, Seventh-day Adventist, she was the founder. Found and gave her life to the Adventist. See? We know for a fact, Catholic and Adventist, and even all Christians all over the world, that William Miller has a false prophecy that was called in history the Great Disappointment. Christ never returned from 1843 to 1844, any day or any month of that year. So he was a false prophet. And now here I have read here, Miller's message reached Robert Harmon family. And it was that that their teenage daughter Ellen, future founder of Seventh Adventist Church, found and gave her life to the Advent of. So naniwala din si Mrs. White sa prophecy, false prophecy of William Miller. So if the father is a false prophet, then the daughter and sons of faith of William Miller are also false prophets. Please, venerable Adventist brothers and sisters, do not be hurt. Because this is only talking about the truth. Galatians 4.16 Am I your enemy because I told you the truth? St. Paul says, Galatians 4.16 So in Isaiah 9.15-16 If the head is a false prophet then the tail if the father is a false prophet the parent then the daughters and the children are also false prophets Isaiah 9.15 And the prophet that teaches lies who is the head and also is the tail and they that call these people blessed shall cause them to ear. And they that are called blessed shall be thrown down headlong. Isaiah 9.15.16, do I read this Bible? In, the, in Proverbs 29.12-13, If the leader believes in a lie, and the members also believes the leader, the lies of the leader, they are called by the Bible evil. So how can you be the righteous church, the holy church that is founded by Christ, if the scriptures tells that your leader believe in lies and is teaching lies, like Mr. William Miller, if the ruler or the leader listens to falsehood, and all his members and officials will be wicked. 
Proverbs 29, 12 to 13. See? Now I was surprised. Seventh Adventist Church from 1863 up to now, 2017, they have not even canonized Mrs. Ellen Goodwhite, Mr. Joseph Bates, and Mr. William and uh, Mr. White as saints. They don't even have saints. Kasi Brother Alvin, babalik pa si Cristo, we will be resurrected. Doon na malaman ang sinong saints. Is that so? Why is Peter and Paul already saints when they died? They are declared they are already in heaven. Revelations 18.20 So you are not part with the saints in heaven? Do you mean? That is your doctrine that there is not, no soul yet in heaven? My God, that is false. In Revelations, Apocalypse 18.20 Rejoice over her, said St. John the Revelator. Thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. So the prophets and holy apostles are already in heaven. They are the one commanded to be rejo to rejoice according to the word of God for God hath judged your judgment on earth Apocalypse 18.20 the way Rams version so you have no connection with these saints in heaven then you are not the true church Saint Paul also affirms what what John said in Revelations 18.20 in Hebrews 12.22-23 this is the true church those people who are part of the true church in Matthew 16.18 promised by Christ Even the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It portay inferi. Nan prevalent adversus iyam. Matiyo di si sa si si otso. Nan duon na sa langit ngayon because when they die, only the body dies. The soul and the spirit goes to heaven to be with God. Hebrews twelve twenty two twenty three. But you are come to Mount Zion. This is now the new Israel, the new Zion. Where in heaven and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Hindi na yung lumang tipan pa. Tapos naging karugtong kayo ngayon sa bagong tipan. No. And to the company of many thousands of angels. And to the church of the firstborn who are written in heavens. And to the God of the judge of all. And to the spirits of the just men made perfect. Hebrews 12, 22-23. So this is the firstborn church. Matthew 16:18. The church founded by Christ. The apostles, they already died. The prophets in the New Testament church. The saints. Now they are in heaven, their spirits are made perfect. In heaven, this is the general company. Kung sa Tagalog Bible, dito sa Tagalog, pangkalahatang tigum o tipon, pagtitipon ng iglesia ng mga pangalan, ibig sabihin yung Catholic, saints are who are in heaven. There is no Adventist here. The claim by Bert Ronald is fallacy of assumption and probata. You just quote Bible verses and claim, I am the church. That is also being used by other religion, Jehovah's Witness. They also quote verses. Revelations 12, 15, 17, we are also the Tremlant Church. Even the Church of God. Anybody could claim that. But that does not prove anything. Assumption and probata. You must connect in history, in the Church Fathers, in standard differences, world history or Church history. Connect what is written in the Bible. Just what I, I have done earlier this morning, I connected the Ecclesiastes Catholics in Acts 9.31 to the Roman Church, which is spread throughout the whole world. Romans 1.8, in fulfillment of the prophecy of Christ in Matthew 21.43, that the kingdom of God will be taken away from the Jews and given to a nation that will bear its fruit and that the Roman nation bear its fruit. Romans 1.11-13, I have read earlier this morning. And Brother Ronald have no connection. Why in America? From Jerusalem, ang layo, ang Roma, mas malapit pa, nasa Biblia eh. Sa inyo, hindi ba kayo nag-wonder? You doubt? Against the Catholic Church, sa Rome, Jerusalem, and then and sa inyo, at the end of the world, sa dulo, you see the globe? Rome is opposite and Jerusalem, opposite to America in the globe, nasa likod yan. And you did not doubt your church, and then it arrived 1863. Now, you should doubt your church. Where Ronald has not He said, uh, it's not about the name of the church. No, I object. I quoted Isaiah 56, 7. Thank you very much. And Christ quoted it verbatim in Mark 11, 17. My house, meaning the temple, the church. 1 Timothy 3, 15, the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark truth. Shall be called the house, a church, to all nations, meaning universal Catholic. And Bert Ronald did not object to that. It will be called. Not Adventist, because Adventist is an event. Advent is an event. It's not the people. You are just like on a level with the Pentecostal church. Pentecost is a feast of the church and of old Israel. And then since you are from there, you claim to be Pentecostal to prove that you are the church founded in the day of Pentecost. That does not prove anything. Because the Christians in the New Testament, even though they are there in Pentecost Sunday, 
they were not Pentecostals because they were not called by that name, even the Apostolic Fathers, and even until 1910. And would you believe that you're a Pentecostal church? Kalaban niya ng Seventh-day Adventist kasi Seventh-day ka nga. How can you claim to be a Pentecostal church from the Pentecost Sunday when you are Seventh-day Adventist? That is a hard pill to swallow by Seventh-day Adventist. Are you a Pentecostal church? No, we are very because we are Seventh-day Adventists. We are not on Sunday keepers. We do not keep Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. We do not celebrate that with our church. So that proves that you are not the church who was given birth by the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. That means you are not the true church, no matter how you claim. Many Bible verses, Revelations 12, doesn't prove anything. Fallacy of non it does not follow. Meaning you are persecuted. When was... The Seventh Adventist Church in 1863, when it was organized, it was persecuted by the Roman Church? No! Actually, during that time, they were attacking the Roman Catholic Church, and the Roman Catholic Church is very silent, not even answering the attacks of the Adventists. Why do I know that? Because bishops in America has already written about that. For example, our apologist, very known apologist, Brother Melchor Manalili, you remember him, who wrote Faith of Our Fathers? Yes. Oh, Cardinal James Gibbons. He was the first one to answer for how many years? That was only the time he answered attacks from other religions. There is no proof we persecuted you. And Brother Ronald mentioned the Roman Church persecuted your church. That is cannot be proven by history from 1863 until now. Until now, that we are now brothers, you, the General Conference accepts us as your brothers. We, the Catholic Church, that after the Second Vatican Council, also accept you as separated brothers in the faith. So much more, wala ng persecution between Seventh Adventist and Catholic Church. So, your your proposition crumbles and fails. It cannot be proven by your own statement. If you say something, a statement, you, you should prove it historically. Do not just make stories because it would be, become myths and fables. Myths and fables, for example, the myth of apostasy. Total apostasy, it cannot happen. Because Christ said, that church that I found that even the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. False prophets for their eyes, yes, they could bring with them some also friends to, to be members of the church. But in John, 1 John 4.4, 4, your faith has destroyed, has overcome the false prophets of the world. 1 John, 1 Catholic letter of John 4, chapter 4, verse 4. So false prophets could not, could not win, could not be victorious over the church founded by God because it is of God. It is not of man, Matthew 16, 18, 19. If you believe it is apostatized, then that is your church. That apostate church is your church, not the Catholic church, the original church founded by God. The Ecclesiastes Catholics in Acts 9, 31, the Catholic test Ecclesiastes in Romans 16, 23, I have quoted earlier this morning. There is no Adventus Ecclesias. There is no something like that in the Bible. You, you cannot even, this is even a misnomer, seventh day. And how can you be a seventh day when the living Bible, Colossians 2, 16, 17, let no other people judge you because you do not celebrate Sabbaths? You do not celebrate Sabbath, meaning the Christians, Colossians 2, 16, 17, are not celebrating the seventh day Sabbath of the Jews and you name your church seventh day Sabbath? Hebrews 4, 7 to 8, God has already spoken of another day. Tapos kayo, kayo, yung seventh day pa rin sa Old Testament ng mga Jews, another day na eh. So hindi nga pangalan yun kasi iba na ang Sabbath. Kaya nga yung Isaiah 56, I contest with Brother Ronald this morning, hindi yun refer to Sabbath keeping 70 Adventist na Saturday keepers, kundi it is Sabbath keepers, Sunday keepers yun eh. Majority of Christians are Sunday keepers, they are also Sabbath keepers. So, walang kontra sa Isaiah 56. Actually, it's the Catholic Church kasi lumaganap, tatawaging, bahay, panalanginin, para sa lahat ng bansa. It is not Adventist Church kasi hindi sa lahat ng bansa. Kasi nung panahon ng mga apostol, wala Adventist Church only founded in 1863 by Mrs. White, Mr. White and Joseph Bates. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you po. Para sa second stand for rebuttal, Brother Ronald, you are given 15 minutes. Okay. Sa unang pakinig, parang tama, no? Sabi nga ng Proverbs 1817, kailangan siya sa atin yung kanyang sinabi. Una, sabi niya, problema natin mga Adventists, wala tayong connection kay Kristo, walang mababasa sa ating mga libro na tayong tinayo ni Kristo. Kasi po, ang mali doon, sinusukat nila tayo sa kanilang maling panukat. 
Kailangan meron ba tayong koneksyon na kalagay, nakasunat? Hindi ho. Paano ho tayo nakonek kay Kristo? Nakakonek tayo kay Kristo ayon sa Juan 7.17 ang sabi ni Kristo sapagkat makikilala nyo ang gumagawa ng kalooban ng Diyos sa kanilang turo. Yun. Hindi pa na sinabi ni Kristo makikilala nyo kung sila ay merong early history nakakonek kay Pedro. Hindi gano'n. Kasi apostolic succession is not a guarantee. Maging yung tiniwalagan nilang church noon sa Greek Orthodox Church, sa Eastern, yung mga Eastern Church, meron din silang version ng apostolic succession. So, dalawang version ng apostolic succession. Ang Anglican Church meron din version ng apostolic succession. Tatlo na ang apostolic succession. Sino ngayon sa kanilang tama? So may problema pag sa apostolic succession. Kaya yon hindi ang ginawang batayan ni Kristo na hahanapin mong koneksyon mo kay Kristo. Ang sabi ni Kristo, ulitin ko, 1.7.17, makikilala sa turo. Anong sabi doon sa, sa, sa Judas 3? Na inyong ingatan ang pananampalataya na minsan, binig, na minsan magpakailanman ay ibinigay sa mga banal. So, alin magpapatunoy? Yung apostolic succession na yung turo? turo. Yung pananampalataya ko ang magpapatunoy. Kaya nga po, paano nagpatunoy yan? Kasi yung Bible natin, nagpapatunoy. Iningatan po yan. Kaya yung sinasabi niya, wala ho, hindi nakakapasa yung kanyang standard na pagpilit ipinapasa sa Adventist, kailangan may connection kay Kristo. Through, ano, hindi na namin kailangan kasi alam namin na ang turo ni Kristo nakasulat na sa Biblia. Mali ang application niya sa Matthew 16.18. Sabi ni Kristo, upon this rock, I will build my church. Tutul ba tayo ron? May tutul doon eh. Upon this church, I will build my church. Ngayon, kung atin pong kukunin yung mga early church fathers' interpretation, based din sa kanilang understanding, hindi ang angkop sa interpretation ng Roman Catholic. Ang sabi nila doon, yung rock o yung bato na pagtatayuan ng iglesia is none other than the confession of Peter which is Christ is the Son of God. Doon itabase, doon itatayo ni Cristo ang iglesia doon sa confession of faith na yon ni Peter. Tandaan nyo, Matthew 16. Ang problema sa Roman Catholic Apologies, they don't know how to use context. Marunong silang selective, talon dito, talon doon, tagpit, tagpit. Ang Matthew 16, ang topic doon, si Jesus. Nagtanong si Jesus, sino ba ang akala nyo? Saan akala ng mga tao? Sino ako? Ba yun ang tanong ni Jesus? Sabi si Pedro lang ang sumagot, Ikaw ang Kristo, ang anak ng Diyos. Mapaalat ka, Pedro. Hindi sa'yo sinabi yun. Laman at buto. Sinabi sa'yo yan ng Diyos sa langit. Kaya sabi ni Pete ng Panginoon, sinasabi sa'yo na ikaw ay Pedro. At sa ibabaw ng batong ito, yung batong ito, yun yung confession ni Pedro. So, paano kami nagkaroon ng koneksyon kay Kristo sa itanayon niya iglesia? By confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. So kung tatanungin tayo, anong connection nyo sa Matthew 16, 18 mga Adventists? Ang connection namin, because we confess the same confession that Peter confessed. Amen? Amen. So dahil ito, nagkakaroon tayo ng connection sa Iglesia. Hindi kailangan ng tradisyon na kailangan nakakonect ka doon sa may problema nga yung uh, connection ng apostolic na yan. Na Kaya sana po, maintindihan nyo ang subject si Kristo. Kaya yun po ang connection ng Seventh-day Adventist Church sa uh, church na ito ni Jesus. Now, ang founder daw natin si Ellen White, wala naman tayo doon sa salitang founder eh. Nakakaproblema lang doon sa umuunawa. Kahit si Pablo, unang Corinto 3, Jesus 18, sabi niya, ako'y gaya ng isang matalinong tagapagtayo. Si, si Pablo, tagapagtayo ng iglesia. Ang hindi niya tinatayo, yung, ano, sabi niya, yung cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ. Yung turo si, ni Kristo, hindi niya papalitan yon. Pero yung turo na ito ni Kristo, the same confession made with Peter, doon niya itatayo yung kanyang iglesia. 
Metas, maraming tao na niliwala doon sa confession ni Peter. Siya po ay natatayo doon. Kung sumampalataya kayo na si Jesus ang Son of the Living God, kayo po'y nagiging bahagi ng iglesia ng Panginoon. Without connecting to Rome, sa diocese ng Rome. Hindi ko nga alam eh. Hindi niya sinagot kanina yan, yung diocese ng Rome. Now, eh, ibig bang sabihin ito? Wala daw ba tayo kasi nabasa ng local church daw yun? Eh, problema, dapat, eh, hayaan tayo ang magpagiwanan kasi tayo nag-publish ng books na yun na nakalagay. Ellen White are the founders. Tsaka hindi lang si Ellen White ang founders, binasa mo naman, marami sila. Ang, ang tinayo nila yung local church, kagaya ni Pablo. Masama man magtayo ng local church, wala. Yung local, as long as the local church ay connected kay Kristo, based on the confession of Peter. Okay? So, sana maintindihan natin yan. Now, sa 1217, yun daw utos na yun ay hindi panibagong utos. Yun ay, ay kahit anong inuutos ng Panginoon na sinusunod. Yun ang problema. Pag hindi tayo marunong magbasa ng konteksto, hindi mo alam kung ano yung utos na pangahawakan at paniniwalaan ng Remnant Church sa 1217. Pagpapasahin natin yung, yung introduction ng Romans chapter 12, ang introduction na nagsisimula sa, Rome, uh, sa Revelation, hindi sa Romans 12, uh, Revelation 11 verse 19. Ano nakalagay doon? Nakita ni Juan, napuksan ang templo ng Diyos sa langit at napakita ang kaban ng tipan. Ano? Ano yung nasa loob ng kaban ng tipan? Sa pungutos. Kaya nung matapos makita yung kaban ng tipan, andun sa pungutos, tsaka ngayon, ipanaliwanag yung babae na inusig ng dagon, at yung remnant church na sila'y tumutupad sa utos. So, connected sa Ten Commandments yun. Hindi sa kung ano-anong utos. Yan ang problema. Pag di tayo marunong magbasa at ikalang. As a respect to the Bible, let the Bible interpret itself. Hindi yung interpret natin based sa ating tradisyon o nakagislang pananampalantaya. Okay? Ito pa. Uh, pinag uh, medyo kinutsyan niya yung yung pagkakatayo ng ating iglesia ay galing daw sa great disappointment. Para nga namang nakakahiya. Para nga namang nakakahiya naman kayo samantalang si Kristo. Tatayo sa bato, hindi uh, mamamatay ng gates of Hades. Pero alam nyo, nakakatawa ba yun? Ang hindi alam ni Brad Alvin at mga kaibigan katoliko, ang great disappointment nasa propesya. Nasa Revelation 10. Pag pinasa niyo yung Revelation 10, yun po ang propesya ng great disappointment. Bakit naging great disappointment? Sabi ng Revelation 10, nakaki, sabi ng Anghel kay Juan, Juan, itong aklat na palumbon na bukas, pansinin nyo, sabi doon, the open little book, based sa uh, uh, interpretation ng mga historicists, kahit the Adventists, they believe that this is referring to the book of Daniel. So darating ang panahon, mauunawa natin ang propesya ni Daniel. At yun po ang pinakaunang pinag-aralan ng grupo nila, William Miller, Millerites, nung panahon na yun. At sabi ito sa Revelation 10, sabi ng Anghel, kainin mo yung aklat. Hindi, ibig sabihin nito, kakainin mo yung Bible. Ibig sabihin, itanggapin mo. At bilang matamis sa iyong bibig, ngunit magiging mapalit pagdating sa iyong siya. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Ipapangaral ng grupo ng mga sinaunang, mga Adventist, yung mabuting balita na si Kristo malapit na dumating, that is good news, kaya matamis sa bibig eh. Pero ano nangyari? Hindi dumating si Jesus, Alfred I. Miller, October 22, 1844, nag-disappoint. Tama yun, Dave, mali yung event. Kaya sabi nung ni Juan, sa Revelation 10, naging mapangit sa dyan. And that represents the great disappointment. Nakakatawa ba yun? Hindi. Pag binasa nyo, continuous din, ang Revelation 11.1, sabi ng Panginoon, ikaw ay humula muli. Ginamit pa sila muli ng Panginoon para ipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral lalong-lalo na tungkol doon sa tinatawag na pagsusukat ng templo. Kaya, yan po ay blessing in disguise. Hindi po nakakaya yung disappointment na yon para sa amin mga Adventists. Ngayon, sabi ni Brad Alvin, eh, si Mrs. White daw hindi natin kinanonize na Saint Man lang. Ba't meron matayong galong? Wala ko kung ano sa Adventist na canonization of the saints. Kasi ang paniwala ng Adventist, based sa Bible, kahit nasa lupa ka pa lang, you can be saint in Christ. Amen. Kaya nga sabi ng Revelation 12, 14, ano sabi ng Revelation 14, 12, narito ang pagtitiis ng mga banal. 
And here is the patience of the saints. Eh kung yung lahat pa na lang sabi nasa langit, paano pang papasensya ang ito? Nasa langit ka na eh. Oh, so, pag sinabi yung saints sa Bible, not necessarily when you are canonized by the church. Saan mo nabasa sa Bible yun? That is, uh, wala sa Bible yan. Gawa ng tao yan. Kaya, yung inyong uh, sistema ng authority ng church, at yung sistema na tinatawag yung iyong karapatan, gawa ng tao, wala ka ba ibon? Okay? So, si Mrs. White, hindi kailangan siya i-appoint ng saint. At again po, yung Roman Catholic Standard na hindi pwedeng ipinit sa mga Adventists. Sabi niya, lahat naman ng tao pwede mag-claim, lahat ng reliyon, pwede mag-claim na rem ng church. Totoo ba yun? Lahat ng tao pwede mag-claim, pero pag sinukat mo, based sa Revelation 12.17, may palatandaan yung rem ng church. Anong palatandaan? They keep the commandment and the testimony of Jesus. Tanong, do they keep the commandment? No, they change the commandment. They do not keep it. They abrogate the commandment. Sinasabi niya, eh, Sabbath din naman ang Sabbath. Oh. Tanong, saan ba galing yung salitang Sabbath? Sa Latin yan ay Sabato. Sa Greek, Sabato. Sa Kastila, Sabado. Sa ating salita, Sabado. Pag tinignan mo sa kalendaryo, pareho ba yung Sabado at Biglo? Sa kanya, pareho. Kaya ba namin, pareho yung Sabado at Biglo? Kailan naging Sabado ang Biglo at kailan naging Biglo ang Sabado? Kahit tignan mo sa kalendaryo mo, magkaiba yan. Na Dalvin. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng ipilit sabihin na kami ay tumutupad dyan sa Isaiah 56.7 na kami ay nangingilin ng Sabat. Hindi kanya. Binago niyo nga yung Sabat eh. No. So, pagka mapapunayan mo na yung Sabado ay tingko, siguro tama ka. Okay? Uh, gusto ko rin idiin dito yung inunit niya ito kaninang umaga na hindi daw tayo true church kasi hindi tayo nagsa-celebrate ng birth ng church. Tanong, sino nagputos niya? Nag-celebrate ba yung birth ng church? Inutos ba ni Jesus yan? Meron bang just said the Lord? Is it coming from the infallible inspired word of God? Hindi. Sino lang may utos niya? So sino ngayon ang tunay na iglesia? Yung iglesia na nagtitiis, nagsisikap, tuparin ang utos ng Diyos sa kabila ng pag-uusig ng tapon? o yung iglesia na para hindi matupad yung utos niya ang babaguhin mo para pumabos sa kagustuhan mo I don't think na kung sa dalawa group, uh, dalawang stand na ito hindi po pasado ang Roman Catholic Church kasi sa kanila Bible and Tradition samantalang ang stand talaga sa 2 Timothy 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 is The inspired word of God. Mas may authority po sa mga tunay na banal na anak ng Diyos. Ang inspired word of God. Kaya yung kanyang mga sinasabi, hindi naman galing sa inspired eh. Yung bang i-celebrate ang kapista ng Diyos, saan yun? Wala. Wala sa inspired word of God. Yung kailangan i-canonize si Ellen White, saan mabasa yun? Hindi rin inspired. Alam ko, dalawa naging inspired, ang Diablo at ang Panginoon. Kung hindi sa Panginoon, saan pa yun? Kaya pipili tayo. Madali lang pumili. At ang dito nga, ulitin ko. 12.17, uh, hindi niya na-refute tong 12.17. Bagkos parang gusto niya palabasin na lahat sila pwede rito. Hindi kayo pwede lahat dito. Most of the churches, Catholic, kasama na ng Orthodox Church, kasama na yung mga Evangelical Protestants, hindi sila pasado dito. Marami akong mga references, may small mga Protestants, ina-admit nila na wala sa Bible yung Sunday. Yan ay hindi, hindi inutos ng mga apostol. Yan ay ginawa lamang dahil sa tradisyon. Eh, sinasabi niya na mayroon ng ibang araw sa Hebreo. Hindi ibang araw yun. Pag binasa mo yun, it's spiritual day, hindi literal day Sunday yun. May natitira pa ang araw para may panat at na natitira pa ang pamamahingang Sabat para sa bayan ng Diyos. Alam niyo anong ginamit kong pinanalo ko kay Perion noon? Nung nagdibati kami ni Perion, kaya nang, ngayon, ngayon, ngayon nagpapasto na ng Adventist. Yung Hebrews 4.17, Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath. 
Okay. Thank you, Brother Ronald. So, uh, maganda po. Paganda na paganda po ating mga pag-uusap. Uh, bago po tayo dumako sa cross-examination, break tayo ng 1 to 2 minutes. Mag-CR muna kayo, relax. Mag-unat-unat po kayo. Alam ko po kayo ay uh, gustong-gusto nyo lang magtanong. Mamaya po yung part ninyo. Uh, continue mo na yung emotions ninyo mamaya. I was listening to Brother Ronald. And then, he was claiming... I know, lalabas talaga. He will mention local church. Actually, pero the challenge is, walang sinulat dyan sa mga libro nyo. Is Barone na nag-invento yan. So you're the first Adventist apologist who invented that palusot. No? Kasi in standard apologetics in Adventist, in sa general conference, walang sinabi na Ellen Goulet is only founded a local church. Kasi pag local church, connected ka kayo dito sa Rome at sa Antioch at sa Jerusalem, di ba? kung local church, eh wala nga kayong connection. You claim also walang connection. So paano maging local church? Eh walang connection sa Jerusalem. My God, it's very elementary. So, Brother Donald, you're teaching us very elementary logic and thank you for that. Oh. Now, he quoted 1 Corinthians 10, 11 using St. Paul when St. Paul says, be careful how you build. Sabi niya, the only foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen for that. The Catholic Church also believes that. But Paul is reminding the Corinthians not to build other foundations than Christ has already built. 1 Corinthians 3.10 If you will read the verse, the way this version, it says, For other foundation, no man can lay, but that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Ibig sabihin, magtatag ka ng simbahan, galing talaga doon sa pundasyon ni Kristo. E sinong pundasyon ni Kristo? Ephesians 2.20, Matthew 16.18 You are Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church. You are built upon the foundations of Mrs. White ba? The apostles and prophets. Ephesians 2.20 So may karapatan na magtatag ng simbahan, connected ka sa prophets and apostles. Is Mrs. White, Mr. White, and Joseph Bates apostles? No! Only 12 are apostles. Kaya nga, ang proof ko kanina, siguro hindi nakuha ni Brad Ronald, 12 apostles, the two apostles, Peter and Paul, founded the church in Rome. That's why we claim we are true. Meron bang ibang nagtatag ng iglesia sa Roma, the Roman Catholic Church in Rome, aside from Peter and Paul? Wala. Kaya nga si Cristo ka nagtatag din ng iglesia sa Roma, the Roman Catholic Church, I have proven early this morning. E sa iyo, 7th Adventist, sinong apostol? Sa 12, sino si James ba? E alam naman natin, walang apostol na punta ng Amerika during that time. O kahit na lang si Cristo, nagpakita kay Ellen Gilbert, Ellen Gilbert, you are my new apostle and prophet in this last days. Magtatag ka naman iha ng iglesia kasi natalito yung iglesia tinatag ko sa Matthew 16, 18. Walang ganyan nangyari. So, Mrs. White, Mr. James White, and Joseph Bates, and some hero, and other 7th Adventist founders, according to United States Archives sa Securities Exchange Commission, 1844-1863, has no right at all, even Felix Malalo or any other church, the 44,000 religious denominations, has no right to establish or found a church, even local, kung walang connection sa true church. Kasi yung church, nandoon na yan, Matthew 28, 20, sa samahan niya ni Cristo, you will just only be incorporated through baptism. Sabi niya ni Paul, kaya ang context for Lord in 1 Corinthians 3.11, nandito sa unahang, hindi mo nakuha. Quote, quote ka kanina ng unang Corinto 12, tapos hindi mo po ala, alam in context. Sabi ka, ito sa kasi si Brad Albin, mga Catholic apologists, they quote the Bible, not in context. E ngayon, ikaw pala, not in context eh. Kasi yung unang Corinto 3, Corinto yan, 1 Corinthians. Eh, unang Corinto 12, anong sinabi ni San Pablo? For as the body is one, hindi dalawa na may nag-apostasize the body, yung unang body. New Testament, Matthew 16 pa naman, 18 ang nag-apostasize. Tapos yung sa inyo, 1863, Another body naman yun, dalawa na. O oh, ba? dalawa na kayo. One only, one body. And as many members, and all the members of the body, whereas they are many, yet are one body. So also is Christ. For in one spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Ibig sabihin, the church, whether Jews or Gentiles. Kaya kung hintil ka, Amerikano ka, Pilipino ka, you must be baptized by this church founded by Christ in Matthew 16, 18. And 1 Corinthians 3.10, founded by Paul in Corinthians, you must have a connection, hindi necessary talaga yun. So, hindi, but Ronald, I, I disagree with that, strongly disagree. Oh, kaila, it's not necessary to be connected. My God, paano ang aral mo makunit mo sa aral ni Kristo? Eh, hindi ka pala konektado ni Kristo. Tapos, diretso ka sa Biblia. Everybody can claim that. 
I will also read the Bible. I master also verses. And then I will proclaim the world. Now I have found the truth. Connected ako sa Bible ni Cristo. Salita ni Cristo, John 17, 17. That is not the way. That way would lead to 44,000 religious denominations. World Christian Encyclopedia. Census 2012, page 100. 44 mil na dahil sa ganyan. Kasama na din dyan si Mrs. White. Sabi ni Brad Ronald, ay hindi naman na-celebrate ng Pentecost Bad Albi ng First Christians. Wrong again! You do not know the context of the Bible. Because in Acts 27, comma 16, Paul was hastening his stay in Ephesus because he wants to go to Jerusalem to, to be on that day on Pentecost. Acts 27, comma 16, and on the first day of the week, when we were assembled to break bread, Paul discoursed with them being to depart on the morrow. And he continued his speech until midnight. Hindi naman to sabat na Saturday sila nag, nagtigong, nagtitipon at nagbreak bread o Eucharist. Verse 16, For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, let he should be stayed any time in Asia. For he said, if it were possible for him to keep the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem, keep the day of Pentecost, Pentecost keeper pala si Paul. Tapos sabi mo, Bardona, contradictory. My God, this already proves that you are not the two church. I'm very sorry, my venerable Adventist brothers and sisters. Please, bear with me. Because the truth really hurts. But no matter how the truth is hurting, but we must love the truth. True love loves the truth. If 1 Corinthians 13, 6 and Ephesians 4, 15, we must speak the truth in love. Now, even in Corinthians, uh, kasi Bardal, bin sa Jerusalem, kaya mag-celebrate talaga si Paul. Oh, he was all still Judaizing at that time. Even in the church in Corinth, in Corinth, kakalina, you, you quote in 1 Corinthians, tapos hindi mo alam the whole context of Corinth. In 1 Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, first day collection. In the Greek, sabaton. Kaya ang first day, naging sabato na ng mga apostol at ni Cristo. Hmm. Please do not laugh because this is the truth. And ang Pentecost, saan? O dito sa baba, nandito rin ang Pentecost. Verse 8, and that I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. So kahit sa Epeso, it is already a, a Gentile area, a pagan area, not a Jewish. Paul is also celebrating the first day of the week, 1 Corinthians 16, 1-2, verse 8, also Pentecost, kaya nga Pentecostal eh. Hindi pangalan Pentecostal Church, pero it was the church who celebrated Pentecost. Kaya this proves, once and for all, na kayo hindi nag-celebrate ng Pentecost to God and St. Paul. Did not keep the first day. Wala kayo Eucharist on the first day. Walang collection on the first day. You did not keep the Sabbath on the first day. Then you are not a true church. No matter how you use the scriptures, maneuver the scriptures as much as possible to suit your your own church. Now we go to the command. Are you sure that you have the command, the right command? Are you sure you have the right command? Why is it that if you have the right command, you, do you do not know that the scripture is being prophesied in the New Testament times? People will come in the later times. And this is the command that you have you have taken from whose command? From Christ? No. Let us read 1 Timothy 4, 1, 2, 3. Now the Spirit manifestly saith that in the last times, meaning the end of days, some shall depart from the faith, not in the time of the apostles itself. Sino yung mag-depart from faith? giving heed to spirits of error and doctrines of devils, speaking less and hypocrisy and having their conscience seared, forbidding to marry. You are not allowed the seventh Adventist to marry a Catholic. Actually, this is your doctrine from Ellen Goldway. You are like the Iglesia ni Cristo. Marriage should be respected. If you seek marriage with a pig, and you can actually, if St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7, 16. Pero sa inyo, bawal talaga yan. Pag malaman, katulik ko yung boyfriend ng anak mo, simple, sinasabihin mo, anak, iha, alam mo naman ang aral natin, kasi mapariwara kapag katulik ko, mister mo, maging katulik ko ka rin, sasamba ka na ng ribulto. O, di ba? Pero wala kaming doktrina na sasamba ng ribulto. Kaya bawal eh, sinong nagbawal? We should not laugh about this because this is a very serious matter. Forbidding to marry, to abstain from meats. Oh, which God has created to be received with scholarshiping by faithful by them that have known the truth eh, itong libro na ni Mrs. White oh, The Ministry of Healing page 270 to 272 maraming bawal pork alcohol kahit konti palang total bawal 100% kahit konti wala sabi dito abstain from alcohol walang porsyento dito pero sa Bible 1 Timothy 6.23 use a little alcohol eh, si Kristo gumawa ng wine to, to let the 
the celebrant of the marriage in Canaan, John chapter 2 verse 1 to 11, do also drink wine. Because in Sirach 36, 25, 26, a feast cannot be happy without a little wine. You see, the Bible is against the Seventh day Adventist. And this is the command that you have, you have affirmed. That is not the command of Christ. That is the command of the devil. Last five minutes. Thank you very much. Now, again, the main argument to that word Ronald, even I am in the negative now, should destroy, is that he should affirm that Mrs. White is also an apostle according to Ephesians 2.20. Para bigyan siya ng karapatan na magtatag ng local church. Kasi pag hindi siya apostol, wala siyang karapatan. O paano kayo, Brother Alvin, patay ng mga apostol, bakit nandito kayo? Kasi sabi ko nga kanina, yung connection. O, oh, napapasi dito, binuklat ko 267 Pope na from Peter. Yung nga, kasi saan ka magpapabingyan kung wala yung si Bano, wala na apostasis na talikod, doon naubos may persecution. Sino mapapaptay sa iyo in 1 Corinthians 13, 14? Wala. It cannot happen because Christ said, I will be with you till the end of this, Matthew 28, 20. And that's it exact and it will always be true till the end of time. Hindi yan mawawala. 1 Timothy 3.15 The church is the pillar and bulwark of truth. Tapos total apostasy. Nag-teach ng error and heresy. Paano pa mag-defend ng truth? Wala na palang truth. Anong truth daw yung Bible? It kaya nga, defender of the truth is the church. Kung natalikod na church, sino nang mag-defend? Di wala lang church. That cannot happen. That is an impossible dream. To dream an impossible dream. To fight an unbeatable foe. To fight the Catholic Church is unbeatable. I tell you, my friends, so better you convert to the Catholic Church. Pag lalabas ka sa Babylonia, lumabas kayo sa Babylonia, pahayag 18-1 hanggang 4, saan kayo babalik? Dito, papasok kayo sa 1 Peter 5.13. The chosen church in Babylon, the cho chosen church in Rome, led by Peter. Wala kayong ibang option to go to that Catholic Church, the Church of Rome. Even Mrs. White in the, the Great Controversy, page 432, says that the Roman Church, the Catholic Church, the Romanist, the Church of Rome, it's the same entity, it's the same church, has real Christians within it. So yung real Christians, palabasin mo, pagiging Adventista, irreal na nga eh. Kaya kung may real doon, doon ka pumasok, pag maring real Christian ka rin, sabi ni Mrs. White. Great Controversy, page 432. So now, you have not proven anything, Brother Ronald, I'm sorry to tell you. And your argument falls and falters miserably. It was demolished by me. Turned into dust. Dugmok yun. Bungkang. Sira talaga. Bakit? Walang karapatan kahit sinong tao. Kasi nga apostol lang. Sabi dito ni Dr. Nida, translator's handbook on the post letter to the Ephesians, ang commentary on Ephesians 2.20, ang definitive article na Apostles are prophets, meaning no other prophets but yung apostle din. Kayong 12 apostles, one definitive article the, the same as the prophets, the 12 apostles are the 12 prophets in Ephesians 2.20. So no other. Si Christo Church, Chief Cornerstone, 12 apostles, the pillar, labing dalawa, tapos nalagdagan mo pa kay Helen Goldberg, labing tatlo na, mas magaling ka pa ni Christo ng mga apostol, my God. That is blasphemy of the highest degree. Hindi mo nga kinonfirm na ikaw yung anti-Christ, pero yung gawain mo, nagtatag ka na ka sa sariling iglesia, sabi mo, founder ka ng simbahan mo, hindi ka nanayan, nagturo ka sa lahat. Di, you are already an anti-Christ with that, you attack the saints. You see? Sabi ni Brother Lord, hindi naman ka gawain ni Brother Alvin to canonize. Kahit man lang hindi canonize, just to call Ellen Goldberg a saint. Kasi sa Isaiah 4.3, they shall be named saints in the time to come. Isaiah 16 to 12, the people shall be called holy. Tawagin talaga yun, Romans 1, 7, holy people. Kayo sabi nyo, sa buhay pa kami, brother, been holy. Pero patay na, hindi na matawag holy. Oh my God. Brother Adventist, I've heard this argument from my father, debating with my uncle. Pagpatay na tayo, eh, holy lang sa buhay pa, sa lupa. Pagpatay na, hindi na holy. Dapat sana i-declare talaga na si Ellen Goldwell, our prophet, found the prophetess. Spirit of Prophecy is now Saint Ellen Goldwhite. Wala man lang. Is it Peter is Saint Muridi. Saints and Prophets, Revelations 18.20, they were called saints. The Divine John, the Divine King James, meaning John the Saint. E kayo, wala kayong the Divine, the Saints of the Seventh Adventist, tapos tunay kayo. Ang pagkabanal, yun nga ang resulta ng tamang aral at doktrina. That is a vague term and ambiguous to say, I have the doctrine, but Alvin, it still needs to be debated. 
I am not afraid to debate about Saba. I am not afraid to debate Ellen Goldwyn and the prima primacy of Peter or the papacy or hell and heaven or any doctrine that we are different. That is still to be proven. That is fallacy of assumption and probata. You just claim the verse, Revelations 12, 17, connect it with John 7, 17, and claim that you have the teaching. It still needs to be proven. It's not a forum to prove your argument. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Alvin. So it's time for cross-examination. Uh, since uh, negative si Brother Alvin, he will cross-examine uh, Brother Ronald. Uh, I just want to remind you po na kapag nagtanong po kayo, uh, paan ba po Brother Alvin, kayo po na magtatanong kay Brother Ronald, let, let, let him give time to ano, answer your question in one minute. So yung cross-examine natin is 10 minutes, consume the time. So pag halimbawa nagbigay na ng hudyat si Brother Ronald, natapos na siya kahit hindi niya makonsume yung one minute, then go, go to another question. So, 10 minutes? Okay na ba? Time? Sige po, 10 minutes. I, ano po yung one minute na question, Brother Ronald? Sige, pero yung, yung timekeeper should say one minute off na. Oh, so, no, we can have the limit. Okay, Brother Ronald. My first question, Brother Ronald, I've already let you prepare it earlier. Where in your standard Seventh Adventist from the General Conference that it is stated categorically and very plain and simple that Jesus Christ our Lord or even one of the Twelve Apostles have founded the Seventh Adventist Church in America? Please give me a standard reference page number. Una, hindi sasabihin niya ng General Conference kasi uh, parehong magkaibang context. Yung tinayo ni Jesus sa Matthew 16 is the Universal Church. That is what we call the uh, Invisible Church. Samantalang ang Seventh-day Adventist Church is a local church. So may connection yung Seventh-day Adventists in a sense with the church that Christ built in Matthew 16, 18 not geographically but biblically. Next question. You said local church. Mrs. White founded the local church. Where is that in your standard in standard Seventh-day Adventist book from the General Conference? Is it only your argument? Or is this not from the Seventh Day General Conference? Where? Chapter and uh, page number of your book. Please give us the, uh, the, the, the book. Well, uh, for us Adventists, we don't need to read it word for word because it is implied already and we have okay. studied. So next question. Pwede ko i-request sa aming general conference next time para for the sake of Brother Alvin, papalagay natin. Next question. Let's go to the Bible. Where? Chapter and verse. Is your argumentation that you don't need to connect to the Apostles and Christ? literally where chapter and verse na hindi kailangan i-connect talaga kay Kristo at labing dalawang apostol wala where, akong sinabi absolutely na hindi tayo dapat kumonek sa apostol okay, na pakinggan mo yung instant ko we are connected to the apostles not geographically but biblically ayun ang harapin ko ngayon where dyan sa bible na not geographically yung mga sinasabi mo for what dalawa Siyempre naman, Bible tayo eh. Hindi yung salita mo lang. Please, Bible, uh, not give us chapter and verse. Ano, sometimes you have to use your common sense. Uh, no, Bible. Kasi pagka walang nabasa sa Bible na geographically, eh, ikaw nga dapat magpatunay ng geographically. Eh, affirmative ka. It's your burden. It's a burden of proof. Eh, wala ka naman mapapasa. So, sinabi na, binasa ko na kanina na ang connection na ang Adventist sa uh, church na tinayo ni Cristo is biblical, not geographical. Kayo kasi ang geographical lang eh. Next question. In 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 11, you use that verse according to St. Paul. Yep. St. Paul is an apostle. The question is, is Mrs. Ellen Goldwhite, Joseph Bates, and Mr. James White apostles? Or not? Please uh, answer categorically. They are not apostles, apostles, but not belonging to the okay, world. Thank you very much. Uh, next question. Apostles sila. Next question. Now, you affirm that Adventism started 1844, right? Well, Actually, in history. Oh, uh, yeah, history. Yes, in history, historically. Now, the question is, isn't that Mrs. Goldwhite and even her, her husband and other founders of the Adventist Church believe in the false prophecy of William Miller? Did they not believe that 1844, before they... They built the Seventh Adventist. They were also <laughs> victims of good, the false prophecy. Did they believe or not? Good. They are victims. Uh, they are victims. Thank you very much. They are victims, pero hindi pa propeta si Eden right now. Uh, next question. If the father of faith, the William Miller, is a false prophet by that false prophecy, the great disappointment, 
According to the Bible, Isaiah 10, 15, 16, ano ang puno? Siya yung katawan, yung membro. Hindi naman siya yung katawan. So now, the question, the question is, now, would you affirm that according to the biblical principles, Ellen Goldwright, a daughter of the faith of William Miller, a false prophet, is now also a false prophet. Would you affirm? Or you... Sabi ko nga sa iyo, si Ellen Goldwright, naging prophet two months after the great disappointment. Okay, so you do not... So, yung pagiging prophet niya, walang connection kay William Miller. Okay, now, now, next question. Okay, next question. Okay, I like you, your question. You said that uh, the Ministry of Prophecy said Ellen Goldwright and you even called that Seventh Adventist Church calls Mrs. White the Spirit of Prophecy. Uh -huh. In Revelations 19.10, who is the Spirit of Prophecy? Jesus or Mrs. White? Sabi ron, the, uh, the, 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 yung patutuon ni Cristo, yun ang Espiritu ng Propesya. Kaya nga, that is the person, Spirit of Prophecy. So, it is it not it. Jesus or is it Mrs. White? ang nag-ooperate ng Spirit of Prophecy kay si Jesus ang source ng Spirit of Prophecy at mga prophets po ang nagpa-function. No? Do you mean Ellen Goldwright is a spirit? Is <laughs> it? <laughs> no, no. Mas parang ganito. Spirit na lang alak. Ibig mong sabihin? No. The Spirit of Prophecy is a person. Yes. I, have, I have asked you the no, question. No, it's not the person. It's the it's function. It's not the person. It's the function of the prophet. If I can read the Baka person. Baka iba yung person sa function. If I can read, I challenge you. This is a showdown. Ah. If I can read that it is capital, nah. spirit of prophecy, referring to the spirit of Christ, Ay, is this a person? No, uh, I'll explain it to you. Uh, spirit of prophecy is not referring to the person. It's like uh, the oh. It refers to the function and the work of the Holy Spirit within the, prophet, uh, within the ministry of the prophet. Question, where in the Bible can you find that the word spirit capital yeah, is? It's a person. It's not a person. Kaya ang Bible, where are you asking Bible? Kaya do not make a statement. Dito ko na po biblically. Please, Pedro, not give me a chapter and verse that the Spirit, capital S, is not a person. Ay, pakita mo mo sa akin ang person nyo. Ipakita mo muna sa akin ang person nyo, Spirit of Prophecy. Papasa mo. Ah, that is, beside the point, you are an anonymous. You are an anonymous guy. Kasi nga, ang point ko, kung ibabalik ko yung argument mo, hindi mo rin masagutin. Kasi If I can answer that with a Bible verse, you would concede defeat. The Spirit of Prophecy is person. Ay, yes, ako yung person. I prefer to Revelation 12. Yes, yes. Sige, masahin mo person nyo. Because Sige, pero mali. Ikaw dapat magtanong. Okay. 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 Now, next question. If Mrs. White is a true founder of the local church yes oh are you sure that he he is teaching all true doctrines because you you quoted john 7 17 and i was surprised that you quote that meaning you you assume that mrs white and the seventh adventist church has the right doctrine and the catholic church has the wrong doctrine now are you sure that all that mrs white is teaching are all true doctrines because the what mrs white teaches were all based on the Bible only. Wala siyang sariling teachings. Ang 28 fundamental belief ng Adventist, hindi galing sa tulo lang ni Ellen White. Wala siyang sariling teachings. In fact, if you read in our history, Seventh-day Adventist history, si Ellen White, nung pasimula pa lang ang Adventist, pinag-uusapan ng mga pastor, mga ministro, ang doctrine using only Bible. Kaya nga yung po yung libro namin na 28 fundamental belief, yung makapal, wala kayong makikita ron na kinukot namin palagi si Ellen White. But rather, it is always scriptures. Yung essential natin, yung summary ng 28 fundamental belief, di ba? Wala namang spirit of practice doon. Puro verse ng Bible. To prove you that Mrs. White is not teaching anything that came from herself only. In this book, E.G. White Notes, as a premise for Sabbath School lessons, she says, she affirms, that God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, had Himself become a sinner and would suffer the penalty of sin. Saan sa Bible na naging sinner si Christopher Brown na chapter and verse? As if siya, become a sinner. That's symbolically. Hindi, wala siya naman symbolical. Become a sinner. Become is literal. Sinner is literal. Alam mo, ang mapapaliwanag niyan kami, hindi tao. Kaya nga, saan dito paliwanag mo? Yung sabi mo na, it's symbolical. Become a sinner eh. Kasi you have to consider the overall doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Not only on particular application. Besides, it's not our official uh, dogmatic teachings. Eh. Okay, I leave that to the audience. Uh, so, yan, kaya ang mag-i-exhibit ng buong belief ni Ellen White. Bakit lang yung paisa isa? Dito, in page 63, sa Basque Lessons by Ellen Goldwhite, she stated, the omnipotent God, meaning the Father, suffered with His Son. 
Where can you find this in the Bible that the father suffered with the son? Hindi ba nasaktan ng ama nung nakita niya ang anak niya tumatak? Where in the Bible? I'm not telling you that you're not for this chapter and verse po. Because this is a Bible debate. Tama yun, tama yun. Pero ako yung naniniwala kasi ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. Diba? For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. Objection is from the reader. Chapter and verse muna. Hindi pa ako tapos yung kapagpaliwala. Hindi pa ako sagot to. Ah, sige, may chapter and verse. Ah, what? What? May one minute tayo eh. May one minute. Okay. In Adventist theology, yung suffering ni Jesus Christ by which, in which, the Father is sending His Son to suffer and die for our sins. Para sa aming theology, yan po yung type ng Abraham and Isaac. No? Yan ang pinipicture ng, ng ginawa ng, ng ni Abraham ng kanyang ihanto si Isaac. Mas kung ano yung naging reaction ni Abraham ng ihanto niya si Isaac, umiyak siya. Nalulungkot siya. Tao lang yung what more pa kaya ang Diyos? Hindi malungkot maiyak. Kaya para sa amin, may implication through the typography, eh, of course, ang, ang, ang Panginoong Ama ay nalungkot din. Alam na namang matawa yung Ama nun. Okay. Actually, Brother Ronald, the Catholic Church condemns that patripasyanism. The... I know that. Kasi ang belief ng Catholic, walang feelings ang Diyos ng Catholic. So, where is the chapter and verse you are explaining eh? Chapter and verse. Tapos na. Tapos na? Ah, sorry. Hindi pa magtatanong pa ako? Tapos na po yung cross-examine po kayo. So, wala pa tayong magagawa eh, po yung nasa oras po natin eh. Gusto po natin pahabain eh. Baka sa sunod na part o ibang topic, pwede po tayong mag-expect ng medyo mahaba-habang oras. But for now po, uh, limit po yung oras natin. Let's give time to Brother Ronald for his uh, uh, cross-examination to Brother uh, Alvin. Ten minutes, Brother Ronald. One minute response, uh, Brother Alvin. Uh, Naka-ano naman po yung naka-record naman yung minute na yun. Nak nakalagay naman po dyan, kaya rest assured po na okay po ang lahat. Thank you. Okay, Brad Alvin, tanong ko po sa inyo. Lagi mong inuulit, ang Adventist walang connection sa Ignatian Tinayo ni Cristo. So, gusto kong malaman, ano yung sabihin mong walang connection? Walang connection geographically o biblically? Lahat, geographically and biblically. Because Christ said, I have one minute. Matthew 28:20 I will be with you till the end of time. So meaning Christ will be the church, not only Christ will be until time, even the church that he will be with with. It will always be historically, geographically because it will be Catholic universal. It would not apostatize, it will not be lost in history. So you must be connected kasi saan ka mabautismuhan unang Corinto 12, 12:13 doon sa organism na katawan ng iglesia sabi ni Paul. Eh wala kayo diyan, eh, walang connection you claim. It is the same the connection. So in error according to Matthew 28:20. Very sorry about that. So hindi ba pwede na wala kang connection sa apostol physically, geographically, pero sa turo meron di ba pwede yan? Actually, yes. Actually that is the the foundation of the Catholic Church. If you are not in connected with the true teachers, the apostles and the founders of uh -huh. the church, then also doctrinally you cannot have foundation because 44,000 religious denominations okay. iba-ibang turo at aral eh. Okay. Paano ipapaniwanag yung nasa Galatians 1:8 uh, ang sabi ni Pablo, mahimat kahimat kami. Ha? Apostol siya, kami. Uh, anghel, anghel pa, galing sa langit. Ang magturo sa inyo ng ibang-ibang henyo na iba sa tinulong sa inyo, sa ibang takwil. So, ibig sabihin, doon sa sinabi na yon ni Pablo, ano ang mas pahalaga? Yung posisyon o yung aral? Answer. It must not be disjointed and disconnected the doctrine and the gospel with the gospel picture according to Galatians 1, 6 to 9. Paul did not intimate that my teaching another gospel is not connected with me. Kaya kasi sinabi nga kahit kami magturo ng iba kasi sila eh. Involve sila. Sa mga tuwid, kahit hindi ka, mali, yung kahit apostol siya, pero mali aral niya, itatakwil. Judas is also an apostle, but he's no. a part of the whole organization I'm of the church. I'm not talking about Judas. I'm no. talking about Paul. No, si not Paul. Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. Paul, Paul is yeah. infallible because he's the founder of the church. He's part talking, of the apostles. I'm not talking about infallibility. What I'm asking is, sabi ni Paul, ako apostol na. Apostol na totoo. Pero pag maliaral ko, itakwil niyo ako. Tama ba yan o hindi? Tama. It's a condition. But Paul, 
being an apostle, a founder, cannot teach lie. First hmm. Thessalonians 2.7 hmm. I am an apostle and a preacher to the Gentiles. Oh, I, I cannot lie. I Hindi am infallible. So Paul is only giving a condition nga meron nga ang kinakasama ka yeah. ni Pablo, magtuturo yeah. lang mali. Pero organically, Paul is part of the church. And so alin ang mas mahalaga ayon kay Pablo? Yung pagiging apostol niya, yung aral? Dalawa. Ang aral. Dalawa. Oh, dalawa. Huwag ka tumawa. I still have to answer. Pipili ka hindi lang eh. Hindi. I, I choose two, both of them, because it is not exclusive. Ah. It is inclusive. Ang turo ng apostol, <laughs> galing sa apostol, kasi <laughs> ang foundation, hindi lang turo, Ephesians 2.20, you are founded upon the foundations of the apostles. Wala nga sinabing doctrine eh. Apostles. Correct. Revelations 21.14, the church is built in heaven. Yun ang 12 Correct. apostles. Wala yung doctrine doon na mga sabat, mga ano pa dyan. Wala yung sinabi dyan. Correct. Kaya nga, Kaya, pipili correct. ka lang eh. Pag yung apostol, hindi pipili, dalawa nga eh. Dalawa, yun nga, pipili ka. Eh, dalawa eh. Pipili ka eh. Apostol, dalawa, eh. pero mali ang aral, at saka yung tunay ang aral. Ngayon, sabi mo, pinili mo dalawa, eh, hindi ka nakakarelate sa sinasabi ni Pablo. The next question, Bergonal. Alright. Ang right. 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 question is this. Next question. Sabi mo, Si Ellen White at yo ay bula ang propeta na rin kasi siya ay nahawaan ni William Miller yes, dahil was prophet. Tanong ko sa iyo, kailan nahawaan si Ellen White nung siya ba ay kinikilala ng propeta o bago pa kilala ni propeta? Uh, it doesn't matter if later on matter. he was... Do, please do not okay, okay, interrupt okay. Donald with the love. Go, 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 go. <laughs> hindi na, hindi na kailangan na he will be, she will be declared a prophet later on or not. The fact is, she was an Adventist. Yung binasa ko dito, siya an Adventist book. Pero Mr. Moderator. So, sige, sige. Still have a... Uh, objection. Ang tanong ko kasi, Mr. Moderator, objection ko. Okay. Ang tanong ko kasi, nung si, nung si Eden White ba ay naging biktima ng uh, great disappointment, propeta na ba siya noon o hindi pa? Kasi kung propeta na siya, full profit siya. Kaya ang tanong ko sa kanya, propeta na ba siya noon o hindi pa? Answer. Yung claim nga ninyo na propeta siya later on is not already substance. Why? Because a prophet should be called from birth. Jeremiah 1.5 I have called you a prophet from birth. Hindi false prophet tapos naging true prophet. Wala sa Bible ay challenge for a showdown. Kung sinong propeta dito naging muna false prophet? Wala. Eh, hindi, malayo yun eh. Kasi si Jeremiah yun. I'm talking about uh, Ellen White. It is by biblical. My question to you, huwag mo ikapit si Jeremiah kay Ellen White. Sige. Ang tapos si Ellen White. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa propeta si Ellen White noong siya ay nabiktima ng great disappointment. Inamin mo. Actually, hindi pa din declare nila. Pero the question is, is she really a true prophet according to the Bible? <laughs> If she become okay. a prophet later on, then he, she uh, is a true prophet according to here. Jeremiah 23, 30-33 You are a prophet, I did not send them, I did not talk to them Tanong? I did not command them this false prophet Si Cristo, hindi nagsalita kay Mrs. White tulad ni Felix Manalo Kaya false prophet Jeremiah 23, 23 Tanong? 30-33 Ayon sa iyong pagkakaalam, kailan, nag, well, nag, ano, kailan ang unang vision ni Ellen White? Ah, it's not substance to the debate. We're so tough, right? Because I'm false vision. Ang in-established, ah, it's your moderator. That's a concern to you. Ay, I'm just, 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 I'm Nalalaman mo, unang vision ni Ellen White. Itong sagot ko, it is not relevant to the topic today. Because, no, huwag mo na mag-sapaw. Because now, what is a stake, my friends? Is Mrs. White really a true prophetess or not? Yun lang ang stake eh. Hindi naman kung kailan siya diniklara na propeta, kung kailan ang unang vision niya. Kasi we Catholic for a fact, we do not believe any visions of Ellen White. Okay. But we believe that she is a false prophet in biblical standard. Sige. Jeremiah 23, 32-33 and other verses. I respect you kung ayaw mo sagutin yun. Next, Next question. question. Sabi mo kasi, yung sabat nyo, yun yung linggo. So ang talong ko, That kaysa... is the first topic, pardon. Mr. Moderator, I object. No, no but you, you discuss it. You discuss it. I mentioned Pentecost. Uh, Sige. Kasi I rebutted your Pentecost. I appeal to that. Uh, na-mention kanina ang 
topic na yan, o ang word na yan. Yes, morning so, pa yun. So, karapatan niya na... Hindi morning pa yun eh. Iba naman ang topic ngayon eh. But you mention it. Huwag mong dadal hindi to what happened in the morning. Yes, but do not bring here what happened in the morning. Because it is a... Because you know why you need to mention it? Because I mention it as one of the... Uh, one of the sign of the true church. Regular. So, our topic is at Sabbath. He responds to it by saying that we are also not the keeper. I will answer that so question. Now, if you were, if you will affirm that you cannot stand your stand sa affirmative side that Seventh Adventist Church is the true church, let's go to the Sabbath. I will call no on that. No problem, but uh, I'm, I'm telling you, kasi sinasab, ito yung response ko dun sa uh, so, wala ka ng iba. Wala ka ng iba. Marami, marami, uh, marami lang. Ka. Ito, ito nga lang eh. Ito nga lang, hindi mo masagot eh. O sige, ito. Kung sabi ko uh, sa inyo, ang Sabat ay linggo, tanong, kailan naging Sabado ang linggo? I will answer you. With the Greek Bible, if you have the Greek Bible, please open it. Kailan naging Sabado? Yes, even in the Gospels. Matthew 28, 1. The first day of the week in Greek, Holy Day Sabaton, Te Episcopose, Hes, Nian Sabaton. The first day of the week, Nian Sabaton is also Sabat. Mali, mali, mali. Please do not, please do not add commentary because you have to ask a question. Ano, bahay mali? 47. Ah, sige, go. Mayroon pa ako, Fred Royal. Ah, sige, sige. Ah, sige, sige. Oh, please do not commentary. Mali, mali ang Bible, mali. I am only reading the Bible. Mali ang punawa. Oh. Kaya ako, please, Fred Royal. Please keep quiet muna. Oh. Ah, sige, mami, mami. Every single time, the first day of the week in the Christian scriptures, in the Greek, eight times, it is in the Greek, Sabaton also. The Sabbath, the Saturday, is also Sabaton. So, dalawa na ngayon. Kasi yung unang Sabaton, na Saturday, sa Old Testament, sa Jews, pero sa Christian, yung first day, Sabaton na rin. So, you cannot contest that in the Greek. Ngayon, na bulgar na tuloy, kasi hindi pa naman Sabat sana ang debate natin. Pero, hinalungkat mo eh, kaya na-prove na ulit tuloy. Ang katuloy ko ang tama. Tingin ko lang sa ikaw ang abulgan. Please do not comment on me. Ito, 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 direct question. Direct question pa lagi, Pedro. Ang alam mo lang ba na definition ng Greek na Sabaton ay Sabat? Hindi ba ayon sa Greek Standard Lexicon, ang Sabaton, it refers to week? It is also refers to week. Oo! It is week. Kaya wala ka. Yung Sunday, kaya yung Sunday. O, sige, sige, sige. Oh, sige, sige, sige. Let's have this debate. Masaya lang tayo, bro. Sorry, sorry. On high level. Debate. Sige pa, one minute. Hindi mo tatapos na tayo. Malulungkot ako eh. Please be silent, bro. Alright, so one minute. Now, do not make a false take to me. Because it is also meaning week, yung Sabaton. It is not already the first day, specific day. Kasi yung Mian Sabato, is referred also as a day. Kasi specific eh. Wala ka namang concur, ano dito na, na interlinear na yung first day, hindi sabaton. Yung first day, sinabi ba week yun? Sinabi ba first day of the week? First day nga lang eh, wala nga ang week na na-mention sa, sa translation. Kaya in the Greek, yun talaga yun. Dalawa na nga kasi sa Judaism, isa sabat. Sa Muslim, Friday. Christians, Sunday, sabat, the Lord's Day. O, I have here the Greek Facebook in page 10. Uh, Hemera Kiriaki. Ito ng Lord's Day ngayon, o page 10, Hemera Kiriaki in the Greek, Sunday. Domingo. Kaya hindi na sa Madok. Israel, okay, tanong. Hindi mo ba alam na ayon sa mga standard lexicon na mihan ton sa baton, ang literal na translation ay the first day of the week. Kaya nga sa baton nga yun ay first day nga eh. O di week siya. Ito totally proves the proposition that the Sabbath of the Christians is already the first day. Sunday. Hebera Hekeriake Revelation 1.10 The Lord's Day It is Sunday It is not Saturday Time na ba? Relax na po kayong dalawa Inaano lang po namin yung time Para fair po tayo sa oras at panahon Na binibigay po namin sa inyo Okay po para po sa 5 minutes I think si Brother Old na Para sa affirmative niya na 5 minutes Okay po ba sa negative? Okay, okay. F five minutes for summary and conclusion, brother Alvin. Malalang question. Sayang na na konti yung oras natin for that time constraint. Okay, for what we have to finish it. Now, in Revelations 1.10, Brad Donald, ikaw man kasi nanguna dito sa Sabat-Sabat, kaya anuhin na lang natin for a showdown. Kasi dapat bago tayo umuwi, malaman ito ng buong bayan eh. Apokalipsis 1.10. Sabi dito, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. 
and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Meaning, I was in the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 14, if you are in the Spirit, you are worshiping the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. Now, what is that Lord's name? No translation of the New Testament in Greek, in Latin, in even translations English. Kahit anong translation, wala yung translation na Saturday or Seventh Day, yung Revelations 1.10. The Lord's Day, the phrase book in Greek. Oh, basahin natin. Hemera, Henai, Koryaki. Sunday. Kasi ang Saturday nila, Semera, Henai, Sabato. Hindi, hindi Lord's Day. Kaya yung Lord's Day dyan, yun ang pinili ni Kristo. Yun, yun ang linggo. Now the Greek, in eight times in the Bible, binasa ko na isa lang talata, pero I can read Greek, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, etc. 1 Corinthians 16, Acts 20, etc. Puro na yan mga sabaton. Not referring only to the week, kasi yung week is not exclusive, inclusive na yung week eh. Kasi yung week, inclusive of Saturday and Sunday. Nerespeto ng mga Kristiyano, sabato din yung sabado, Saturday. Pero yung Domingo, yung Lingos, First day, Sabato na rin and you cannot deny it because it is inspired. Great, my God. If you deny the works of God, you're attacking Christ. <laughs> and not the spirit of prophecy, sabi ni Brad Ronald, hindi daw yung person. How, Brad Ronald? Spirit of prophecy, capital letter, hindi person. Person nga yun, kasi si Kristo nga mismo yun, ang spirito ng prophesia. Saan mababasa? Unang Pedro 1.16 Sinong espiritu yun? Hindi yung espiritu ni Ellen White. Kasi si Ellen White tao, babae. My God, ang dami palang dapat malaman ng 70 Adventist by Donald. Oh. Unang Pedro, uno, oh, basahin natin, this is a Catholic epistle of St. Peter the Apostle. St. Peter, who is this spirit? 1 Peter 1.11 oh, Sabi dito, maliit kasi itong Bible ko. O, oh. To, to Peter's. Please start with me. No? Okay. At least, maubos ko yung oras ko ngayon. Twelve. For which cause? Saan eh? First Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Oh. Searching what or what manner of time the Capitalist Spirit of Christ in them, meaning the prophets, to whom it was revealed that not themselves but to you, they minister those things, ibig sabihin mga prophets, by whom they have preached the gospel to you. The Holy Ghost being sent down from heaven. Holy Ghost yung Holy Spirit, Spirit of Christ, according to Peter in Matthew 16, 18, in which the church is founded. Hindi yun si Mrs. White. Kasi si Mrs. White, hindi naman Spirit, tao yun eh. Babae pa. Please, Mr. Pedro Natovidos, let us be honest. In spirit of prophecy that you claim to Mrs. White, hindi pwede malapat. Kahit kanino, kahit nga, si, hindi si Ellen White lang, kahit kanino. If this will be, will be claimed by Felix Manalo, it cannot be. Or anybody else. Because the spirit of prophecy is Jesus Christ, the spirit of Christ and the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Father, Matthew 10.20. Puro yan, ang, ang Diyos yan, kaya nga anti-Christ eh. Kasi yung titulo ng Spirit of Prophecy, inangkin mo, isa Diyos yun na titulo. Ang Papa ng Roma, nagangkin ba Spirit of Prophecy? Hindi. Kaya kayo yung to, Thessalonians 2.4, specific na tao. Kasama kayo dyan eh. Sa false antichrist who would come. Who would these people be? 1 John 2.18-19, the false antichrist. Always one is the chief antichrist in Thessalonians 2.3-2-6. O maliwanag dito. First Catholic Epistle of St. John the Apostle, who are these people? Oh, tingnan natin sa Biblia. Sabi dito, Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist cometh, even now there are become many Antichrist. So may Antichrist, the chief Antichrist, yung Dios Thessalonica, Dios 4 hanggang 6, meron din makasama siya, hukbo sila ng mga Antichristo din. O sino ito sila? Last hour na, last times. O di ba 1863? Di ba kasama yan? Kaya sabi nyo, babalik na si Kristo kayo na last time na eh. O hindi yung Catholic Church kasi yung, yung Pope is a system composed of 267 persons. E sino ang Antichristo? Nandun na rin. Okay, thank you very much. Five minutes. Brother Ronald, five minutes. Okay, ibigin ko kami natin. Hindi ko natin. Wala yan na mic. Hello? Ay, wala. Wala ka alas, wala kasi yung mic. Hindi, naka-off yung mic. 
Hello, hello, hello. Ayan. Okay na to. Okay, so, Brad Alvin, thank you for your effort to to destroy the seven-day Adventist faith, but unfortunately, you failed miserably. Kinikirong praise tayo mo eh. Kasi, unang-una, um, hindi niya na-reject na may connection po ang Seventh-day Adventist Church by means of the uh, Word of God. Sabi nga ni Jesus sa kanyang prayers sa John 17, Lord, I pray also to them, those people who are listening to their words. Hindi siya nasabi, I pray also for those people, those people who are connected with their primacy as Bishop of Rome. Walang ganun! That was, uh, uh, that is a, ano, sabi nga, a human attempt. Man-made religion in order to, sabi nga, eh, magkaroon ng assurance ng salvation. Ngayon, tinanong si Brad Alvin, yung galing niya awiwas eh. Paano naging Sabado Linggo? Ewan ko kung paano siya tatakbo. Tumakbo siya doon sa, doon sa Mianton, Sabado. Ang hindi niya naintindihan. Ngayon ay sarili niyang definition. Dapat pala si Brad Alvin ay gumawa ng sariling Bible definition. Kasi hindi sinusuportahan ng mga scholars yung kanyang pakilala na yung Linggo Sabad na rin through the use of Mianton Sabaton. Ang literal po translation ng Mianton Sabaton, the first day of the week. Kasi yung Sabaton, inamin naman niya, meaning week, not necessarily Sabad. Kaya kung susundin naman natin yung tatwira ni Brad Alvin, magkakaloko-loko. Bakit? Kung Sunday, ang first day of Sabaton or Sabbath. So yung Tuesday, yung Monday naman, ang second day of Sabbath niya. Tapos Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, ang lalabas ang Sabbath niya, hindi lang niko, ay pitong araw na Sabbath niya. So nakita niyo kung saan haan to, yung inventong uh, pangangatwiran na walang suporta. Kaya pag sinabing first day of the week, kasi... Linggo. Kaya nga, literally sa mga Bible translation, tinatawag siya ang first day of the week. Kung tama si Brad Alvin, yung second day of the week, Sabbath din. So, Brad Alvin, Monday, Sabbath din. Wala. <laughs> Tuesday, hanggang Friday. Ang Sabbath din ng Catholic, araw-araw, parang born again na. So, bagong doktrina naman namin ito kay Brad Alvin. Alam ko sa Katoliko, ang Sabbath, sabi nga, araw-araw na ang Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Uh, binanggit ni Colossians 2, this is a scaling eh. Pero alam nyo, ang Sabbath doon ay bahagi ng yearly Sabbath, hindi po weekly Sabbath ng Ten Commandments ang tinutukoy doon. Ngayon, Revela yung Revelations 1.10, Lord's Day. Ha? Huh? Lord's Day. Hindi rin po ng linggo yun. Anong ginamit niya? Hocus Pocus, Word, uh, word Study, according to ganitong ganitong word. Ang dali lang, mga kapatid, para malaman nyo kung ano'y totoong Lord's Day. Hindi kailangan ng hocus pocus. Punta lang kayo doon sa ginagamit ni Brad Alwin, Isaiah 58, 13. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, inyong ipangilin ang aking sabat na aking araw. My Holy Day. Amen. So, siya, wala kasi yung mabasa sa Bible na Holy Day ang Sunday. Kaya kumamit siya ng mga hocus pocus. Next. Spirit of Prophecy. Person down. Kaya nung tinanong ko siya kanina, dami rin hokus-pokus kasi siguro naalala niya. At sinundan natin yung verse na binasa niya sa 1 Peter 1.11. Eh hindi naman spirit of prophecy ang nakasulat dun eh. It's spirit of Christ. Kaya pinalusot na lang niya, Holy Spirit yun. <laughs> Pero pag binasa natin yung verse na yun, sa Revelation 12, it is talking about the spirit of prophecy. Sa ibang translation, in fact, verse the Living Bible, the four does is a word that the testimony of Jesus is the essence of prophecy. Sa mga tweet, it is not a person, but the essence of prophecy. No? Kaya pag binasa niyo Revelation 22 verse 8, sabi niya nun, pumunta ka Juan sa iyong mga kapatid na nang hahawakan sa Espiritu ng Kristo o Spirit of prophecy yung iyong mga kapatid na mga propeta. Propeta yun eh! Tumutukoy sa gawain ng propeta. Babae daw si Ellen May, pro propeta. Meron naman babaeng propeta. Basahin mo lang yung Joel, dos, Betosyo, bubuso ang aking spirito. Makakakita ng pangitain ang mga lalaki at mga 
babae. Kaya dyan sa bagay niyan, mga kapatid, makikita natin, no? Mahirap mag-focus-focus. We have to stick to what the Bible say. So, thank you very much and happy Sunday. Brother Ronald and Brother Alvin, ngayon po time for question and answer. Gusto ko po kayong uh, bigyan ng uh, mga paalala sa ating pong pagtatanong. Tayo po ay hanggang alas 4 lang. Dahil dapat po, ibibigay yung time na 1 hour sa inyo. Kaya lang po, uh, dahil po may sana 9 kaya lang nag-start tayo ng 10, na late po tayo kasi hanggang 4 lang po talaga tayo dito. So meron tayong more than 30 minutes para sa ating pagtatanong. Now, since marami-rami po tayo dito, pwedeng lahat magtanong, pwedeng marami magtanong, pwedeng kaunti. So sa mga magtatanong po, ililimit, uh, bibigyan po namin kayo ng pagkakataon na maglimit ng tanong ninyo hanggang dalawa. Okay? Kung konti man ang magtanong, eh balik na lang kayo sunod. Uh, kung wala pa talaga magtatanong, pwede ko yung bumalik. Pero uh, kung marami magtatanong, lilimit lang sa dalawang tanong. Ang, sa pagtatanong po, pwede nyo pong i-quote yung mga presenter natin sa kanila pong sinabi, pero wag ko kayong sasagot ng sarili ninyong tanong. Huwag ninyong ika-counter yung kanilang sinabi, hayaan po natin silang sumagot doon po sa tanong ninyo. Huwag po ninyong didibatihin kung hindi nyo po gusto ang, pag di ko kayo satisfied sa sagot po nila, eh, ba, pabayaan na po natin at uh, tuloy na lang po natin yung pag-aaral para sa po kanilang mga ibinibigay na sagot sa atin. So maliwanag po ano sa mga magtatanong kasi time na po ito para sa audience uh, participation. We'll give you time to ask questions. Sana po masunod yung ganung mga paalala natin. And then, pag magtatanong ko kayo, pwede nyo sabihin na i-address yung tanong kanino, kay either kay Brother Alvin or uh, Brother Ron. Okay po? So liwanag po tayong lahat. Ha? Limit your questions lang sa dalawa. Pagka wala na talaga magtatanong mamaya, if we still have time, pwede po namin kayong bigyan ng time para magtanong. Okay, sino po unang gustong magtanong? Ha? Hello, hello. Yeah. Sige po. Siguro, I think, ah... Uh... Okay, sige po. Since, since kaunti lang naman din po yung uh, part, uh, attendees po ninyo, so bibigyan po namin kaya tayo para po magtanong. Since marami-rami din kami, baka mamaya mabugbog naman si, si Sir Albi na madami. So, to be fair din po para sa inyo. So, just raise your hands. Ako po mag-a-acknowledge yung tanong. Sige po, tayo. Uh, sa pagtanong, relax lang po tayo sa pagtatanong, i-address ang question, huwag po tayong a-atake sa mga sasagot ng tanong. So, salamat po. Uh, ako po, uh, natuloy ko rin po ako, no? Ngayon po kayo magtatanong sa dalawa. Matatapal na ko kayo, kasi ganito po yan. Nakita ko po, magmula sa akin, sa edad ko na ito, magmula noon, magmula noon magsaseleksik ako, nagkaroon ako ng interes sa pagbasa sa Biblia. Marami ko nakita mga debate. Kahit, anong denomination. Nakita ko walang, wala namang nagdesisyon na may nanalo o natalo, di ba? At ano bang punto, ang tanong, ano bang punto bakit naging debate? Para sa ano? Para hanapin ang totoong simbahan o hanapin ang kaligtasan? Hindi ko ba ang, ang punto natin para kaligtasan? So kung kaligtasan pang hinahanap po natin, hindi kaya kung ano po nakasulat sa Biblia, Brother Alvin, dapat natin siya din kasi nakita na Naano ko naman siguro na lahat na rinwala na si Kristo ang kaligtas ay kristyano. Bakit po maraming denomination po, Pati Elvin, na isa lang naman ang Diyos natin? Iyon po ang tanong ko siya, bakit nagkaiba yung masamantalang kristyano naman tawag sa lahat? Ang tawag ko pa sa katoliko, romano-katoliko, ay romano-katoliko, hindi po kristyano? Kristyano rin. Siya po ang sasagot natin. Sige po, Brother Albi. Brother naman, daming tanong eh. Dapat isa lang. First, I have proven kaninang umaga that the Catholic Church is founded by Jesus Christ. So, galing doon, maraming mga religious denominations at mga sekta-sekta kasi 1 John 2.18, they will come out of that two church led by the one antichrist which will appear in the end times kaya yung mga ibang reliyon, that is part of the prophecy of Christ, Matthew 24, 24, 26. In the last times, Christ said, many will come in my name. Magdadala, iglesia sa Diyos, Church of Christ. Who, who are false prophets? No? So that is the truth of the matter. Now, if you ask why we debate, in in Acts chapter 18, verse 26, there is, oh, Apollos is a debater. It's all no a way to tell the truth. Kasi sabi dito, nang mga katwiran siya ayon sa katotohanan at wala nakakatalong sa kay Apollo. Kaya yung katwiran din, pag you have the truth, 
you are not afraid to debate. Because what are you afraid of if you have the truth? So people who do not debate, meaning they they are they are cowards. Dili subok yung aral nila. Ibig sabihin, actually wrong na yun. Philippians 1.28, according to the Bible, ang pamantayan, natalo ka na, yung you are have a fear, kaya natakot ka, uh, kumalaban in, in a public debate, meaning you have fear. You're already a loser, meaning you have the false, falsehood, you have not the truth. Philippians 1.28. So brother, yun ang sagot. Lugo, next nakita ko po unang nagtaas po si brother Ray. Tapos kayo po. Simple ako, tanong po. Isa lang yung iba, mamaya na pag wala na talaga. Sinabi mo kanina, not Ellen Abel Alvin, sinabi mo kanina na Ellen White invented the name Seven Day Adventist Church. Meron ko po bang mababasa that Ellen White invented the name Seventh-day Adventist Church kahit sa Bible or sa writings very easy to answer in the United States Archives of the Securities Exchange Commission nang magparehisto si Mrs. White sa tatatanungin ng mga taga-official, taga-sec sa Amerika anong pangalan nito ma'am? ah, so sinulat ng association, the association shall be named for the first time ha Seventh-day Adventist Church piramado ni Ellen Colbert ni Mr. James White ni Hinsam Aaron, ni Joseph Bates yun na yung archives yan you know that, you are Adventist, do not deny that parang Felix Manalo di ba brother and sister nagpirma ng Security Success Commission yung register nila, shall be named the association Iglesia ni Cristo tapos nakapirma, Felix Manalo o sino naman nagumpisa na hindi si Mrs. White so they can just invent them second na tanong nyo po yun hanggang dalawa lang po tayo, limit lang limit hindi kita tinanong tungkol doon sa pagparehistro tinatanong kita sinabi mong imbinto maghanap ka ng mga references mo dyan na nagsabing inimbinto nga talaga ni Mrs. Sweat yun po ang last ko na question brother, nagdaan tayo ng elementary alam natin yung synonyms at antonyms yung invento, another synonym of that is lunch na nag-lunch ka ng bagong concept ba? Kaya nirehistro mo. Nandito yung lunch mo. Sa libro ko, bago ko lang binasa ko, oh. SDA, Layman's Movement, A Door to Hope for Laodicea. Sabi dito, mga kapaliwanag naman, with the failure of the second advent to materialize in 1844, Mrs. Ellen G. White, in association with other founders, launched the seventh day Adventist denomination. Kaya ang pag-imbinto ng pangalan, kasama na ng pag-lunch. Pwede ba mag-lunch na walang imbinto ng pangalan? Ayun ako, very simple logic, brother. At tuloy kanina pa, nasagot na kita eh. So thank you po. Uh, maganda po yun, no? after quoting uh, what he has said, then go directly to the question. Sige po. Hi, brother Alvin po. <laughs> uh, maganda hapon. <laughs> okay, maganda hapon po. So... Okay. So, sabi niyo po kanina-kanina, ipinagkikita niya na uh, kung ano yung ugat, yun din yung magiging sanga-sanga, which is kaya nga ang claim niyo is false prophet sa Ellen G. White. So, ang question ko po, kung si Peter ang ugat, bakit po na may asawa, bakit po yung mga sanga-sanga, which is yung mga bishop, mga pope, is walang asawa? So... Paano po nangyari yun? Kung ang ugat nila may asawa, bakit yung mga naging sangasangan nila, ewan ang asawa? Uh, sister, I beg to your indulg kind indulgence, yung marriage or not being married, silibasi, is not part of false doctrine? Pwede naman mag-asawa o hindi, di ba? Wala namang debate dyan. Sa balista nga kayo, si Mrs. West, sabi ng libro niya, Council to the Church, mas maigi na hindi na kayo mag-asawa kasi babalik na si Kristo. Ibig sabihin, aral na na mali yan. E si Brother Donald, may asawa, kayo may asawa rin. So it's not a point about false teaching. Eh, yung Isaiah 9, 15, 16, yun ang pamantayan ko kay Mrs. White. William Miller is a false prophet. We know for it, the great disappointment in 1844. So, daughter of faith niya, si Mrs. Ellen White, kahit hindi pa correct claim the propeta. So, anak siya ni William Miller, the false prophet. A false prophet, according to Isaiah 9, 15-16, cannot be that thing if the head is a false prophet, if the father is a false prophet, the children are also false prophets. Mga itlog din at mga anak ng bulaang propeta. Proverbs 29. Okay po, ang next question natin. Ah, follow up. Ah, last mo muna yan, ha? Oh, da, pangal yung follow-up question mo, eh bakit nga po, ano, bakit nga po bilang bilang leader noong simbahan na yon hindi 
hindi nila tinuntun, sinunod yung ehemplo ni Pedro bilang leader nila. Actually, sister, there is still a greater leader than Peter and it is Christ. Christ is really the first example. Kaya ang simbahan later on, they meditate, mas maganda para mainam kung single ka serving the Lord. Paul even said, 1 Corinthians 7.27, If you are married when you are called the Lord, do not separate from your wife or husband. But if you are called that you are single, do not seek a wife that is a command. Kaya yun ang na-meditate ni Peter, later on ang mga po. Eh, sister, wala nang subject to false teaching or doctrine yung married or not married wala naman po sa katulikon sa sabalisa okay lang naman married or not married state ma mapastor ka o mamimbo married ka na pastor o mimbro married ka same pa rin is not false teaching so sister I've answered your question so okay po May, meron to ta, uh, dito po nauna po siya dito uh, hindi na po hulog na sir Gisho po dapat may counter may sagot <coughs> ito say ano okay, okay, okay na po. si ano po tanong naman kay brother Ronald Uh, naku, curious ako kay Propeta Ellen Goldwhite. <laughs> Alam ko, Propeta Ronald eh. <laughs> Kasi po, ang tanong ko po, sabihin niyo po na si Ellen Goldwhite, Propeta po. So, ayon po sa Biblia, premise ko lang po ito, ang mga Propeta po, hinihirang nasa sinapukunan po, di ba? Tama po ba? Uh, hindi yan ang standard sa New Testament. Opo, hindi sa Old Testament po. Yeah, si Jeremiah. Yeah. Oh, pati po si Juan, di ba? Propeta po siya ng last ng oh, ng last testament po ng old so tanong po uh, kailan po anong taon po at kailan naging tunay na propeta si Ellen Goldwhite anong taon po siya tinawag para maging propeta paki-specify po ninyo okay uh, meron kasi prinsipyo sa aklat ng Joel no sa aklat ng Joel, ito talaga ang paraan na ginagamit namin ng mga Adventist tungkol sa pagtawag ni Ellen White. Kaya lang, nasa ka ba Joel? <laughs> Sabi ito, ang ibubuhos ko ang aking espiritu sa mga binatag dalaga, hindi sa mga nasa loob pa lang ng tiyanang nanay. O kaya ay mga hindi pa pinapanganak doon ibubuhos yung espiritu. Kundi ang sabi, mga dalaga na sila, mga binata, at sila'y mga sisipang mula. So hindi standard na kailangan na sa tiyan pa lang. Kaya si Ellen White, nagsimula ang calling niya nung dalaga pa lang siya, 17 years old. At ang kanyang unang vision na para magpakita na siya'y tumanggap ng uh, function ng propeta nung December 1844, ay nagkaroon siya ng pangitain. At yun, pagiging propeta ni Ellen White, kung tutusin, hindi nga niya tinatanggap. Sabi niya, mas mabuti pang mamatay ako kaysa maging propeta. So hindi isang proclaimed prophecy yun. Talagang pakonin ng Panginoon. Yun ang masasabi ko doon. Ah, sige, last. Last question. Bailo ka ang last question. Okay. So, okay po. So, doon naman po ako sa True Church. So, sabi niyo po kanina, ang tunay na True Church may marka. Pwede niyo po bang pangalanan kung ano-ano ang mga marka ng true church na sinasabi niyo? Una, isa lang siya. Pangalawa, holy siya. Pangatlo, ano siya? Apostolic. Pangapat, kailangan siya ay worldwide. Katolik. Ang Adventist, isang church. Ang Adventist, banal. Wala siyang pinapatay, walang inaagrabyado. Sila yung itukusin. Pangatlo, siya po ay apostolic kasi ang doctrine nila hindi nakabay sa apostolic succession kundi sa Bible. And sila po ay masasabi natin Catholic kasi ang Adventist ngayon ay worldwide na nasa 20 million members all around the world. So thank you po eh, bago si Kuya. I remind ko lang po kayo, no? kaya wala po tayong response na one minute kasi po naglimit tayo ng time. Na, oh. Para lahat, kasi may one hour talaga na kaalat. Sayang, uh, sayang kasi yung time para lahat eh, makapagtanong. Sige po si Kuya po. Siguro po para mas pila na lang po tayo kasi ayaw ko po may magtampu kayo sa akin. Dito na lang po kayo pa sa po dito. Ayaw ko magtampu kayo sa akin na hindi ko yung natang. Sige po alika na dito. Pilaw kayo dito lahat po nang magtatanong. Ang kay Brother Arvin. Tanong ko lang. Ah, Brother Arvin. Brother Arvin, kailangan ka po po. Tanong ko lang, since na pag-usapan lang ito yung tunay na church, di po ba? Ayon sa kay Brother Ronald, ang tunay na church ay binibase to sa turo. Tapos, wala tayong mag-base na matatawag na tunay na church kung, o ay, ibig sabihin na 
hindi nababatay doon na kung may babasa sa Bible. Ang tanong ko lang po, dito sa Revelation uh, 12 verse 17, doon sa yan sabi, na at nagalit ang dragon sa babae at umalis upang bumaka sa nalabi. Kaniyang binhi na siyang nagsistupad ng mga utos ng Diyos at may patutuon ni Jesus. So, ang ibig sabihin kung kayo po ang pinapatungkulan nito na totoong church, Uh, kasi ayon sa kay Brother Ronald ay dapat ang tunay na church ay sumusunod doon sa utos na Diyos at sa turo. Paano nyo po mapatunayan na kayo po ito ang tunay na uh, church? Oh, number one, doctrinally. Kasi the doctrine of the, the church founded by Christ is the doctrine of the indefectibility and indestructibility of the church he founded. Matthew 16.18 Even the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. And it will be with Christ always, Matthew 28.20. That is a doctrine of the church found in the Bible na talagang nandiyan ang iglesia hanggang sa katapusan. Now in context with Revelation 12.17, the dragon refers to the Roman Empire. Eh wala namang persecute the church, eh Catholic church lang yun, nung time ni, ni Nero. Kaya kasi Pedro, si Pablo at mga apostol na martyr during that time by the Roman Empire. Ano ang dragon dito? Ang dragon dito is the Papa Sino. When did we persecute you, 70 Adventists, in 1863? No! So the context here, historically, biblically, doctrinally, and geographically, is the Catholic Church. Kami itong ina, pinipersecute eh. Ni pinasa ko kanina sa history, the Catholic Church yan, 33 AD. Itong Protestantism, oh, everything Christianity book. Kaya, it's not an Adventist Church. Kaya yun ang proof, geographically, historically, biblically, doctrinally, that is the Catholic Church, and no other church. No, sabi ni Bernon, no, no other church, one holy Catholic apostolic. Thank you po, pagkaan, tapos niyo pong magtanong, balik na po agad kayo sa upuan para tuloy-tuloy lang po tayo. Sige, sige. Brother Bin, sabi mo kaninang umaga hanggang ngayong hapon, kami po ay postasi o uh, mga sinungaling na propeta. So may tanong ako sa iyo, gusto ko po punto na punto, hindi po yung paliko-liko po ha. Gusto ko yung punto-punto po. Hindi ito po ang tanong. Ang, sa 13, alam kong alam nyo ito, 1317, sabi niya, kailangan dito ang karunungan ang may pag-unawa ay bilangin ang bilang ng halimaw. Sapagkat ito'y bilang isang tao. Ah, tao ha? Halimaw. Hindi ko na sa dragon, pero ito may halimaw dito. Pero tao. Ang bilang ito ay anim na raan at anim na po. Ang tanong ko po, Gusto po kayo, itutal mo agad. Bikayus LED. Nakita mo natin. Malalaman nila kung kami ba, kami ba ang nagdala sa 666 o sino ba nga? Sikta. Gusto po ngayon ah. Sister, if I were, I would be hard on you. I would total Ellen Goldway, total 666. Yes. So please do not, Do not make an invented title of the Pope, Vicarius Pilide, because it is not used anywhere. Sa 267 Pope dito, walang gumamit yan, Vicarius Pilide. At inamin niya na sa Banista ngayon in modern times, sa General Conference, that it is not true. Gawa-gawa lang yun ng mga Adventist polemicists attacking the Catholic Church. The modern stand of the Seventh Adventists, hindi na yung gagamitin na argumento. Ang pahayag, 3-7-6-6-7 sister, isang tao lang yan, the Antichrist to come. Kaming pa yan. Ay, ang papa, 267 na sila. It is a system. So meaning, hindi yun ang papado kasi isang tao lang yun itotal mo ang pangalan of that man, man, man of sin in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 to 6. Revelation 13, 16, 17, man pa rin, the beast, singular. Ang papa, 267, until 5th century, 500 years, mga santo puro eh. Tapos sabihin mo, mga halimaw, mga santo nga eh. Okay, uh, next question po. Uh, pag gusto nyo po magpa-setup ng debate sa kanya, sabihin nyo. <laughs> sabihin nyo na lang kung saan, pero for now, question and answer po. Then respect din po natin yung sagot po nila. Salamat po. Next! Pag-setup ng debate, sabihin nyo na lang kung saan, pero for now, question and answer po. Then respect din po natin yung sagot po nila. Salamat po. Next! Pag-setup ng debate, sabihin nyo na lang kung saan, pero for now, question and answer po. Pag-setup ng debate, sabihin nyo na lang kung saan, pero for now, question and answer po. Kanina, nabanggit mo yung Matthew 28 verse 1. Kasi mabilis yung pagkasabi mo, pero i-recall ko lang ano, na ang pagkasabi mo yata ay walang transliteration or translation doon sa Greek na with 
tungkol dun sa Sabato? Meron, pero may specific day. First day of the week. Kaya yung first day nun, ang specific day of the week, kasi hindi yung buong week ang Sabaton. Ang isang araw, first day of the week, also called Sabaton, kasi in contrast, in contraindication, dun sa Sabado, na Saturday sa Diyos. Kaya nga dalawang ang Sabaton used in Matthew 28. Kung isa lang ang Sabaton sa Matthew 28, ayun. Walang hindi, hindi, isang tanong, araw lang yung talaga sa Sabaton. Ko. Hindi kasi ibang gusto niyang isinasagot eh. Pabayaan mo ako anong sagot ko. Hindi ang pagkasabi kasi niya kanina, kaya gusto, gusto ko man i-clarify na walang nakasulat doon sa Greek or interlinear doon sa Matthew 28 verse 1. Hindi ko sinabing wala. Mayroon nga eh. Pero may first day of the week. First day of the week specific event. Oh, sige, sige. Mayroon ba tayong question? Ano bang manuscript ang pinagpasihan ninyo na nabanggit pa talaga ni Iso Kristo, kasi sa mga dibati sa Bisaya, ito kinagamit ninyo, Matthew uh, 16, 18. Eh. Na may nagtanong doon na kung maba mabasa ninyo yung Roman Catholic Apostolic Church sa Matthew 16, 18, so talo na yung kalaban. Oh. Ganun yon. So ang tanong ko, nabanggit ba talaga? Yung honesty lang ng pagkasun, nabanggit ba talaga ni Mrs. Wa, ah, ni, <laughs> ni Iso Kristo? Okay, eh. i-reserve ko sana yun, kailang follow up na ito eh. Nabanggit ba talaga ni Jesus Cristo na I will build my Roman ano, ano bang pagkatatamang pagkasulat? May, may Roman Catholic Apostolic Church Ano pong klaseng manuscript yun? Actually wala yun uh -huh. okay. If you can say as if you are a Catholic who claims that that is not a true translation or even from the original as, manuscripts that is already an added ano, translation uh, So mali na yung binasa ni Talibong doon nung nang kadibati sila si, si Ramil Parba Actually based on the on the context of the whole Bible it can also be defended because in Acts 9.31 in the Greek Ecclesias Catholics kaya po yung, yung tinatag doon Ecclesias Catholics okay. talaga yun Babalik ako sa doon sa original na tanong ko. Pero nabanggit pa talaga o hindi yung Roman Catholic ni Jesus Christo doon no sinabi niya na I will build my church. Sinagot na kita. Hindi nga nabanggit doon sa original. Oh, okay, okay. So, na. Pero in context with the Bible ang nabanggit sa Acts 9.31 okay. Ecclesiastes Catholic Catholic Church hindi Seventh-day Adventist Church sa inspired Bible. Pwede ko kayong bumalik para mabilisan tayo. Pwede ko kayong magwan. Dalawa po yung tanong ko, brother. Uh, sinabi niyo po kasi kanina, yung sabat, linggo na. Kung yung tanong ko po, kung linggo na po ang sabat sa, sa pas, pasyong mahal, bakit po ang kalagay dito ay, eh, aning ko na lang nga, natalimain at ang sabado'y ipangilin. Bakit po hindi linggo? <laughs> ang context niya ng sabi ng pare sa pasyon di Kandaba, sa mga hudyo, na ipangilin ng Sabado. Hindi naman sinabi sa Kristiyano ipangilin Sabado eh. Pasyon ka na ba yan eh? Kaya sa Katoliko, it should be interpreted by Catholic authorities. Yung Sabado yan, quoted from history sa salvation history, mga Diyos talaga nangingili ng Sabado. Pero yung sinabi dyan na Kristiyano na Iglesia, nangingili ng Sabado, hindi sinabi dyan. Kaya sa, sa Katoliko, linggo according to the Bible. Oh, may palo pa ako din. May, may palo pa ako. Tama 16. Okay. Kasi po dito ay hinis sa binanggit yung hinises. Kaya nga, so, huwag testament yan. Ngayon po, kung sinabi na po na ito po ay para sa Hudyo, may sa during paglalang po ba sa Genesis, may Hudyo na po doon? <laughs> Wala pang Hudyo doon, pero ang Genesis is normative to the Old Testament people of God. Kasi pag yung paggawa ng, ng, ng mundo, pag... It is by, related by Moses, even the command to build an ark to Noah. I-applied mo ba yun sa Catholic Church in the New Testament? Kaya nga, creation pa yun eh. Yung creation is only told that this has, this has been created by God, Genesis. Even in chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, nangili ng Diyos, He rested. But He did not say, Moses did not say in Genesis 2, 3, nangili ng Diyos ng 7th day Sabbath. Walang Sabbath dun, rest dun. In the Greek, katapuises, meaning rest lang. Hindi sinabi na sabat. Yung 17, hindi sinabi na sabat yun. Rest. God rested. Hindi God made it a sabat day. Okay, next po. Kung gusto niyo po kung magtanong, ikot lang po kayo dito. Pag isip po kayo, pila lang ulit kayo. Wala pa naman napila yun. Sige po. Two questions lang po ha. 
Good afternoon, Brother Elvin. Good afternoon, Brother. Sabi mo kasi kanina na ang Lord's Day ay linggo na. May mababasa po ba kayo na talata sa Biblia na iniutos ni Kristo o lumabas mismo sa bibig ni Kristo na ipangilin ang araw ng linggo? Si Pablo, sabi niya, always mentioning first day of the week, Acts 27, tapos unang Corinto 16, 1-2. Sa unang Corinto 14, 37, sabi ni Pablo, lahat ng sinulat ko, pawang mga utos si Kristo. Ngayon pag pangilin ang first day, nag nagano sila ng tinapay, Acts 27, utos na rin yun ni Kristo. Yun ang katusan sa bagong tipan, unang Corinto 5, 6-8. We now celebrate the new feast, not with the old leaven of the Old Testament, but the new feast of purity, about the bread of purity. Yun si Kristo yung bread of purity, the bread that came down from heaven. That is the Eucharist. When did the first Christians celebrate the Eucharist? They never celebrated the Eucharist on Saturday, whole morning and whole day. Always, the Eucharist is celebrated always on the Sunday, the first day of the week. Christ is secured Luke 24, 30 to 35. Nag-ano siya ng tinapay, nag-Eucharistia siya, pinakommunion ng mga tao, linggo ng pagkabuhay niyang muli. Follow up yan, last question. Sinabi ba sa Biblia po ba na ipangilin ang araw ng linggo? Yun na nga ang sagot ko sa'yo. Kasi utos eh. Sabi ni Pablo, o itong pangilin ha, unang Korinto 5, 6 hanggang 8. So, ipapangilin na natin ngayon, hindi na sa luma na libadura, kundi sa bago na. Ang bago that, that pure bread that is Christ, yun na ang utos pangilin. Ano yung bagong bread? Yung Eucharist. Kailan sila naggawa ng Eucharist? Ng Misa. Acts 27, always on a Sunday, first day. Wala na Saturday. Breaking of the bread. Eh, makabasa ka ba dyan? Inutos. Breaking of the bread on Saturday? Wala sa Bible yan eh. Kaya lang gumawa dyan. <coughs> kay Dr. Ah, oh, yan naman. Okay. Salamat. Ay, si, salamat naman. Ang tawag ko kay kaibigan ko sa Facebook si Dr. Oh, okay. So, ang tanong ko sa iyo daw, kasi sabi mo sa kinukot mo yung prophecy ni Joel, no? Tinawag yung mga kalalakihan at mga kababahihan. At doon mo kinunek si Ellen Goldwhite. Ang tanong ko sa iyo daw, doon sa Old Testament at sa New Testament, meron bang nakabatay, nakasaad doon, nakasama si uh, Ellen sa pagtawag? At saan sa apostolic uh, tradition, sa biblical, kung hindi sa reference or historical, na may tumawag kay Ellen, na may connection kay Kristo at sa mga apostoles niya. Okay, so ang unang tanong, anong basis sa Old Testament ng pagtawag kay Ellen White? So, yung Joel is part of the Old Testament, so isa yon sa ginagamit natin. Okay, and uh, marami pang mga talata sa kawikaan na nagpapakita ng kahalagahan ng propeta, sabi sa kawikaan, kapag ka walang pangitain, ang bayan ay uh, naliligaw. So, ang function kasi ng prophet based sa 1 Corinthians 14.3 siya ay nag-aaliw, nagtuturo at nagtumutulong para tumibay ang pananampalataya. Walang function ng prophet na sa New Testament para magturo ng bagong aral. Kaya kami, bago namin tanggapin lahat ng sinasabi ni Ellen White, sinusukat muna namin from the Bible kung approved ba o hindi. Yan ang pagkakaiba ng uh, ministry ng prophet sa New Testament. Sa Old Testament, hindi. That's just the Lord. Eh. Sa New Testament, Pwede na siya ang hatulang kung tama ba sinasabi ng patay sa sinabi ng mga previous prophets. So, masasabi ko, ang pagka-propeta ni Ellen White, hindi kapantay siya ni, Ene, ni eh, Jeremias, hindi siya kapantay ni, Elia, ni na Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, hindi siya kapantay ng mga prophet na yun. Yan. Siya yung propeta ng New Testament, kagaya lang nila Agabus, if you know about Agabus. Sabi ni Pablo, pupunta ako sa Jerusalem, pero sabi ni Agabus, huwag kang pumunta sapagkat ikaw ay papatayin. Pero anong ginawa ni Pablo? Eh, ako'y apostol. Tumuloy siya. Nireject niya yung sinabi ng prophet. So, kasi nga, uh, nakamali ng interpretation si Agabus na hindi naman intention ng Holy Spirit na pigilan si Pablo. Okay, so, kami naniniwala, mas mataas pa rin ang authority ng prophet sa New Testament kesa sa prophecy, prophetic ministry ni Ellen Mark. Hindi siya ako. Follow up, no? Um... Doon naman tayo sa New Testament no? at saka sa historical uh, background. May nakakategorical ba doon na may tumawag kay Ellen? Sa New Testament? Opo. At, o kaya sa reference po, sa general references, may kategorical ba doon tao na tumawag kay Ellen na magiging propeta? 
meron sa Revelation 12.17 na yung last day church o yung panghuling panahong iglesia, iglesia sa huling araw, ay tatawagin ng Panginoon, maglalagay siya ng propeta through the spirit of prophecy. At yan po ay walang ina, ibang kinatuparan, natupad kasi yan sa aming pag-aaral after 1798 ay babangon itong last day church na ito. And it so happened na during that time ay uh, nabuhay si Ellen White at uh, kasama siya daw. Yun ang amin pong magagamit na patutuo. Okay, okay, thank you po. Next question. Pa pwede po kayo umulit ito. Ikot po ulit kayo. Konti pa lang. Mayroon pa tayong uh, 10 minutes more para sa question and answer. For Sir, Al Sir Alvin po. Sabi niyo po kanina, ang Antichrist ba or yung man of sin ay lalabas sa huling araw pa. Yung 666. Pero sabi mo rin kanina, ang Adventist ay bahagi na ng Antichrist. Ibig sabihin po ba, ngayon na po ba ay huling araw? Pangalawang tanong ko po, sino po yung man of sin? Ano ba ito? Organization ba ito? Tao lang. At paano po siya nasasabi na tinasya itong man of sin? Yun ang po. Okay. Very good question. Ang Antichrist talaga is anti-Messiah. The Messiah Christ is only one Christ who led the whole Christian church. Diba? Si Kristo lang naman talaga ang pinano natin. We preach Christ. Kaya yung Antichrist, siya din yung puno ng lahat ng mga kaaway ng iglesia. May darating pa yun. Hindi, na, hindi pa dumating yun kasi hindi pa siya namuno ng lahat ng mga kaaway ng iglesia eh. Magkakaiba pa yung mga anak pa niya. Kasi Satan is still spawning. Nagpipili pa si Satan na sino yung taong kasangkapan niya. Pero there will be one person before the coming of Christ. Kasi pag darating ng Antichrist, yun lang talaga would signal the coming back of Christ. Yun na sabi ni St. Paul in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 6. Kaya para sa amin, hindi yun lang papado. Kasi papado ng existent na yun, eh, matagal na. 267 persons na. Tapos mga banal pa hanggang 5th century. So it cannot be the papal system. It must be somewhere else. Not Catholic. I don't know, a Jew ba or a pagan or an atheist. I did not say Seventh-day Adventist. But I I classify the Seventh-day Adventist Church to Ellen Goldwhite as false prophets. Yung lumabas sa simbahan, 1 Thessalonians. Uh, no, no. Ma Matthew 24, 24, 26. You are part of that for us Catholics. Sa isang anthology. Uh, so, okay. Pwede po. Ano, ano po yung basihan para masabing manuksin? Ah, yung question. Man of sin is singular kasi yung sin niya, yung gagawin niya is total apostasy. Kaya lahat ng aral ng iglesia wala siyang tatanggapin. Kaya hindi yung man of sin any religion lang, any false religion kasi may mga false religion tinatanggap naman Trinity. Tulad nyo sa Badista, tinatanggap niya naman Trinity, Divinity of Christ. So hindi kayo yun talaga ang definitive antichrist na isang tao na man of sin, hindi galing sa inyo. Mayroon talagang titindi na lahat talaga kalalabahan niya. If you read that verse, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 4, He will attack everything that man sees as God and He will sit in the temple of God proclaiming Himself to be God. Kaya first, it, it, you cannot accuse that with the Catholic Church Papal System. We do not also accuse you the Seventh-day Adventists kasi marami namang tanggap yung tamang aral and we are brothers and sisters as Christians, okay? Thank you. Next question po. Uh, ang tanong ko lang po, brother, kasi yung 1680 kasi lagi naman ginagamit ng lahat ng mga denomination niya, mga religion niya, di ba? Lahat niya, ginagamit yan, inaangkin nila yan, lahat. Sino ang tama doon? Ngayon, Alam ko, ano ba tayo nakalaga doon? At dito, pindu, sa batu ito, ito, tayo ang aking iglesia. Pag sinabi na tayo natin, natumba. Natumba na siya. So, itatayo niya ulit. Kasi nakagulong-gulong yung dito tayo ng dark ages, di ba? Na nakawatak-watak. So, tanong ko, ano pa ang foundation o ano pa ang religion na itatayo ni Kristo ulit na ibaba ko niya? Kasi yung sabi na itatayo, kasi in context with the whole Bible, yung Old Testament in Acts 15-16, James referred to the old Israel na nabuwal. Nabuwal kasi yun, pero mga people of God yun, alam nyo yan, di ba? The Jews, but Ronald, are people of God. Kaya mali yung apostasize na sila, hindi nila tananggap si Kristo as the Messiah, kaya itatatag ulit ni Kristo. From the remnant din, sabi ni Brother Ronald, the Peter and the Apostles, yun ang mga first remnant of the church. Doon itinatag ang simbahan na we affirm in the creed, Nisin, Constantinopolitan, Chalcedonian, One Holy Catholic Apostolic. Para sa amin Roman Catholic, centered and headquarters in Rome. One Holy Catholic Apostolic, common tayo dyan. Yun yun, yun ang tinatag. 
Sige, last, last. Sa Civil Day Adventist po kasi, gano'n ako kayo malaki Kristo, si Kristo. Mike, kasi na-re-record. Yes. Ang sinusunod namin lang kasi, si Kristo, kung anong reliyo niya, kung anong, kung anong ginagawa niya. Okay. Nakalagay nito sa 4 bisin size kasi ng Lucas. Ang sinabi niya kasi dito. Oo. Oh. Ah, uh, Dumating siya sa Nazaret na kanyang nilakhan siya ay pumasok sa sinaguga ng araw ng Sabat tulad ng kanyang kinabalian at tumindig at siya ay bumabasa. So, ibig sabihin mo lang siya, basta ba niya para si Kristo? Pumasok siya sa kapatid ng kanyang kinabalian. Ayaw lang tanong mo. Actually, Seventh Day Adventist for us Catholics is reading too much in Luke 4.16. Why in context of the whole uh, Gospel of Luke, in Luke 22.53, sabi ni Cristo, Araw-araw ako, nagtuturo ako sa templo at naroon din kayo. Meaning, hindi lang pala sa sabat siya pumasok, nagtuturo araw-araw. Ibig sabihin, araw-araw nangingilin ba? Kung nangyilin pa si Kristo, it would be indicated kasi yung si Mama Mary and other Christians in Luke 22 pa rin, Uh, Luke 23, they rested based on the commandment, sinabi eh nangilin sila ng Sabado pero lang Luke 4.16, hindi sinabi na nangilin si Kristo, dapat indicate yun, kaya you are reading too much in the verse that does not tell that Christ really keeps Saturday, Sabbath of the Jews, the best that we can do is that Christ taught on the Sabbath, no? He is teaching on the Sabbath, Luke 22.53 So, 6 minutes na lang po tayo, abilis na lang po natin yung siyang tatanong, 6 minutes na lang po tayo Uh, mayroon po ako itatanong no? uh, ang sabi niyo kasi na ang dapat na natin yung sundin na uh, sabat, linggo tama po actually wala man yan sa debate natin you are assuming di ba 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 Ah, kailan po ipinatupad na yung Sabat na linggo na sundin sa old o sa nung new ba o nung old at kasama ba ang Hudyo doon na sumunod nung pinalitan Kristo? I quoted earlier, Colossians 2.16.17, Living Bible, Let not other people judge us by not celebrating new moon's feast, Sabbaths. So meaning, yung Sabat hindi na sinicelebrate ng Christian Church. Kasi yung Saturday Sabbath ng Hudyo, Colossians 2.16.17. Kasi Hebrews 4.7-8, sabi dito, kaya't muli siyang nagtakda ang Diyos ng isang araw. Ngayon, pagkalipas ng patagal na panahon, sinabi na sa pamagitan na David, kapag narinig ninyo ngayon ng tinig ng Diyos, huwag maging matigas ang inyong ulo. Kung ang mga tao ngayon nadala ni Josue sa ganap na kapahingayan, ibig sabihin Saturday Sabbath in the Old Testament to Jews, hindi na sana nagsalita pa ang Diyos tungkol sa isang pang araw na kapayangan. So he spoken of another day, alos, in the Greek, alos, another. Meaning another kind and another day talaga. E kung Saturday tapos another, Saturday na naman, hindi, same day pala rin yun. So our argument, the Lord's Day na yun. In Himera Kiriaki, supposed to be Himeria Saturno. Hindi, Himeria Kiriaki, the Lord's Day, sa Greek phraseology and any Greek uh, dictionary, it is the Lord's Day, Sunday. Araw ng Panginoon, Sunday, Revelations 1.10. Yun ang paninindigan ng si Bang Katoliko, Sunday ng Lord's Day. Okay po, pinakalas na lang natin yung sa dulo. Wala na pong magtatanong po. Last kasi 5 minutes na lang po tayo. <coughs> And, nabanggit niyo po kasi kanina, brother, na go and baptize. Yes. Opo. Yung tanong ko po, brother, uh, bakit po yung Katolik, kapag nag nagbabaptize yung wisik lang hindi po lubog. <laughs> Actually, valid naman lang lubog sa amin. Actually, may mga proselytes na mag-convert sa Catholic Church sa mga Jews in Israel. Linulubog sila sa Jordan River sa Catholic Church doon. I have that picture, hindi ko lang nadala ngayon. So, valid sa amin ang lubog. Ang problema sa inyo, yung wisik namin hindi valid sa inyo. Sa aming tanggap niyo namin na sa inyo. Ginagawa din namin yan kung sa, kung sa gusto. Kasi may mga gusto silang mabaptize na ilubog. E, okay lang ang Paris Christian kung maaang kung gusto mo. So it's not an error for Catholics na ilubog ka sa bautismo. Ang problema namin Katoliko kay yung wisik na sabi ni Pedro, Acts 2.38-39, it will be poured, Acts 2.17, I poured of the Holy Spirit, pouring us of water did, tulad ni Moses in the Old Testament, hindi nyo tanggap yung rantiso. It is a type of baptism also that the Seventh Adventists do not accept or also the Baptist Church. 
by the way, I would like to point out na it is true in Isaiah 15.13 that the Sabbath sa Saturday in the Old Testament is the Lord's Day also. Hindi sinabi ng Katoliko yung Sabbath ng Hudiyo, ninyo, ng Sabadista, it's not the Lord's Day in the Old Testament. Yes, it is also the Lord's Day. But what the point is, in the New Testament, the Lord's Day in Revelation 1.10, walang translation, kahit anong translation, Saturday yung Revelation 1.10, lahat Sunday talaga yung yung Lord's Day. Ay, sige, napapahin nga si brother eh. Kay brother naman ako magtatanong. Oh, sige, okay. brother. Isa lang to. So, nabanggit nyo po yung remnant church yes. sa Old Testament. So, pag kinagalog po siguro natin yung remnant, kung ako nag, di ako nagkakamali, mga na, nalabi. Nalabi. Oh. Nalabi, opo. So, kung may nalabi pala, bakit po doon sa Daniel 2.44, ay eh, magtatayo pa uli ang Diyos ng kaharian na lalaganap sa buong daigdig at mananatili magpakailanman. Sa understanding ng mga early commentators, yung bato na yon hindi church yon Yun po yung second coming na ni Jesus. Ay, hindi, Daniel 2.44. Yun na yun? Ah, yun na yun. O, oh, Daniel 2.44. Hindi namin in-understand, in-interpret na yung bato na yun, ay church. Kaya iyon po ay yung second coming na ni Jesus Christ. In parallel with Daniel 7, Daniel 8, ang laging climax sa iyo kaming hindi pagtatayo ng church. Hindi namin ipinabase yun. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon po. Para po kay brother Ah, uh, Madali lang po itong question ko. Bali, meron po kami yung LNG White, tapos meron po kayong bagong saint na si Saint Kanokson. Bali, ano po ba yung basihan nyo para maging saan po ang isang tao? Okay, very good question. That's a question of inquiry. Oh, Yes, we, we canonize saints because of this. According to the Bible, Hebrews 12, 14, a person should live a very holy life to see God. Kaya talagang it will be proven that that certain Catholic is living a holy life like Pedro Calungsod. Hindi talaga naliligarilyo, hindi ng babae, sister, hindi na, na, na nagnakaw. So he's really a, a saint. Ay sabi niyo ng mga buhay ng mga sabadista, mga santo kayo. Ganun din sa amin kay Pedro Calungsod. Isa yun, Hebrews 12.14. Another is that when he dies, Hebrews 2.4, merong mga milagro galing sa mga santo. Kasi we believe in the Old Testament nga, 2 Kings 13, 20, 21, si Elijah, who is a very great saint ng prophet of God, nagmilagro. Yung, mga, yung patay na, ano lang, nadapis lang sa, sa libing niya, nabuhay, na magkuli. So yung santo namin, kahit patay na, doon na sa langit ang kanilang kaluluwa, Revelation 6, 9 to 10, nagmimilagro pa rin dito. So that's another point. And then the third point is that it should be declared by the church, Hebrews 2, 11 to 12, sabi ni San Pablo sa Hebreo, ang, mga, ang isa lang ang napagbabanal sa lahat ang ama. Pero sa iglesia, ipapaalam at kakartahan ng kanta yung mga santo, mga banal sa iglesia. Kaya makilala mo yun. Kung sipahan nyo, walang na, napaalam na naging santo na na member ng Salita Gentis, malamang hindi kayo yung church na yun. Isip ka tuloy, in every generation, meron talagang santo, maalam talaga natin. Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you declare loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Kaya pag diniklara ng Papa, because he is infallible, also proving that the saint has lived a holy life, tapos he has also miracles after death, he is proclaimed to, as a saint na talaga. So maraming batayan, puro biblical yan. Hebrews 12, 14, Hebrews 2, 10 to 12, uh, Matthew 16, 18, 18, Matthew 18, 18, and many more verses. Last question. Kasi natin si Ellen Goldwhite sa room, papakalunas natin. Pwede. Oh, mabayit ka masing-insis, White. Last question. Kaya pala dyan, pala. Pala dyan, naniniwala kasi ako na 7 death finish ng Holy Week. Oh, sir. Oh, the Red Church. Yes, I respect you. Kung sa iyong palagay, kasi kung yan ang totoo na church para sa inyo, bakit kung sa pagutas ay malinaw para sa aking pananang na nilalabag po doon sa kalawang utas na dapat huwag tayo magkaroon ng anumang revolto. Pagpasok, kasi ang asawa ko dati, katulit. Nung pagpapasok pa lang, marami na pong mga revolto. Ito ba ay anong stand niyo po kung talagang tunay? Dapat kung ang tunay na ano, ay wala po tayong mga revolto. Ah, uh, very good question. Actually, sino naman talaga ang bumilang sa sampung utos? Kasi yung sampung utos, kayo rin lang ang bumilang na ang unang utos, huwag kang magkaroon ng ibang Diyos. Tapos number two na agad yung mga rebulto. Eh hindi sinabi doon, eh, number two yun eh. Actually, before the Seventh-day Adventist came, nagkaisa lahat ng Christian Church, Lutheran, Calvinistic, na yung, yung rebulto, under yun sa first command, 
Ay, dahil yun sa first comment. Ibig sabihin, for 1863 years, wala nakapansin noon. Gabi naman. Ay, brad, we should not believe that. Kaya tama sa katuliko, even my uncle who is an Adventist, sabi, brad Alvin, malapit lang talaga tayo ang simbahan katuliko at sa, sa balista dahil alam namin, nakaukit sa simbahan yun, yung santong utos, na doon pa rin yung huwag kang magkaroon ng ibang Diyos. Kung tinanggal na yun, ay binago na namin. Kasi yung lupulto, brother, I will tell you honestly sa katekisan namin, according to the scriptures in Hebrews 9.21, ginamit sa pagsamba. For example, ang kalabaw ginamit sa pag-araro ng lupa. Hindi yung kalabaw ang inararo mismo. Galami, gamit, galab, ano lang yun, gamit lang yun para pag-araro. Yun rin ang ribulto, ginamit sa pagsamba sa Diyos. Hindi sinamba mismo ang ribulto. Walang katuloy kung bobo yung plastik at, at porsilanag. Sinamba bilang Diyos na si Kristo. Walang ganyan sa katulisan. Brother? Okay, salamat. Palapakan naman po natin. So, salamat po. Uh, due to time constraints po, hindi po natin na uh, ano yung lahat kasi uh, yung mga bagay na in-expect po ninyo kasi very limited lang po yung time. Actually, kinakalculate po namin yung time kasi nag-extend po, uh, na po tayo actually. Kinakalculate po namin yung time kung gagawin po namin yung iba na in-expect po ninyo. Uh, mabibitid po talaga tayo sa oras eh so sobra po talaga tayo sa panahon. Well, uh, gusto po namin kayong pasalamatan sa lahat po na nagpun... Genesis 1.1 In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created uh, the universe or the earth. Out of po ay uh, tumutukoy sa isang banal na gaw. Pag-ibig mo po na yan. Pagpuputol-putol na pinapay. Ang pag-ibig, nakikita yan sa gawa. No?